Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Um, well, I'll hand over the floor to Lynn St. Tamal, our chair. Thank you. I just want to welcome everybody back um, after lunch. And we'll go to the queue in a moment, which is kind of dark in front of me here. But um, I don't know what everybody else was doing after lunch, but I was actually looking for community members to come in. <laughs> <laughs> and um, those of you that were maybe listening remotely, I found um, a, a very old friend of the community, Kibu Sarasde, who, who came in and was warmly greeted by everybody here. So we're very happy to pull new faces in. Um, while everybody's just getting settled, um, I will go through the agenda today. Marilyn had come in, um, I think, just after we had um, closed for lunch. So we'll go to Marilyn as a first order of business. But to remind everybody, the agenda we're working towards uh, this afternoon is an hour. We even have a little bit more time than that if we need to on the National Regional Youth IGF initiatives. And then we will go to um, some uh, contributions from uh, relevant or related internet uh, governance organizations. And then at 5 o'clock, we actually have a briefing um, on the Secretary General's high-level panel on digital cooperation. So that will probably be from 5 to 6, and we'll close the meeting out with, with that. Um, so that's the agenda we're working towards. And Marilyn, you have the floor. Thank you for hanging in there over the lunch break, or breakfast break probably for you. I know the um, AV crew here worked over lunchtime to try and um, sort out some of the problems here. I think part of the difficulty might be, as I was told before lunch, that with the WISIS forum, the bandwidth and everything is just completely soaked here. But yeah. did she just did she put a comment in the chat room? Yeah, yes, Marilyn is saying she will wait because it's not relevant now for the agenda. So oh, okay, okay. Thank you, thank you to everybody who's participating um, remotely. Um, or online, because that's hard enough to do as it is, and it's hard enough when the when the communications tools aren't aren't behaving appropriately. Um, so with that, then let me turn it over to Anya, I think, to kick off the discussion on the National Regional Youth IGF initiatives. And again, Anya, we have an hour, probably even up to an hour and a half, if we if we need that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Chair, for giving me the floor. We had a, an excellent informal discussion over the lunch break, so I'm pretty sure that the number of NRI colleagues would like to intervene. So I'll try, try to keep my notes uh, short, and then I can come in maybe later. And, but just uh, because these are open consultations, not the MAG meeting, maybe we can go a bit broader than just the NRI's integration into the IGF uh, in Berlin and speak a bit about, very briefly, about who are the NRI's, what do they do, and what is the nature of the relationship that the IGF Secretariat has with the NRI's. So, um, as you know, the uh, national, regional, and sub-regional and youth IGFs started emerging spontaneously since 2006, ever since the IGF was formed. The agenda didn't specifically call for the NRIs, but it, the Tunis agenda, but it did encourage the development of the multi-stakeholder processes uh, at national, regional, and international levels, and that was the response of the community to take that form of uh, fulfilling that agenda. The IGF Secretariat is entrusted by the NRIs to run the recognition process and make sure that the uh, all NRIs align with key IGF principles, which means that they are bottom-up in their organizational process, that they are multi-stakeholder, uh, open, transparent, fully inclusive of all views, non-commercial. Currently, we have 114 recognized NRIs, with a number of them being in the so-called information status, where, which means that the IGF Secretariat is trying to uh, help those processes to be uh, finalized, hopefully, in this year. So far, there are 82 countries that are running the national IGF processes, 17 regional IGFs, 15 youth IGFs, and, uh, as I said, I believe six NRIs that are information. The NRIs, just as the IGF, uh, uh, worked toward organizing an annual meeting uh, 
by their multi-stakeholder organizing committees. Uh, last year, 72 uh, IGFs happened around the world. Our estimation is that around the same number will happen also this year. Uh, when it comes about the nature of the collaboration between the NRIs and the IGF, I have to say that the IGF Secretariat, but also the MAG, does communicate and collaborate with the NRIs. Uh, primarily, the IGF Secretariat facilitates the process of the integration of the NRIs into the um, annual meeting. But also beyond the annual meeting, we work together on a number of other objectives, such as, for example, developing publications that are of interest for some NRIs, and that's going to be a f specific focus for this year. Uh, when it comes about the integration into the annual meeting, the NRIs traditionally since 2016 uh, were holding a main session. Uh, they were, it was organized by the NRIs last year. Uh, it, we did change a bit the approach where the main session was co-organized by the NRIs and the MAG, and there was, a, I think, an example of a very successful collaboration between all the MAG members and all the NRIs respecting the MAG working modalities, but also the NRIs working modalities. Aside of the main session, the NRIs for the last two years have organized the collaborative sessions. These are the sessions where we have the NRIs partnering on a topic of mutual interest uh, with, uh, with uh, respecting the regional diversity, first of all. Um, and uh, in, for the Paris IGF last year, there were five of these collaborative sessions organized. Before that, for the IGF that was hosted in Geneva, Switzerland, we had eight of these. Uh, the NRI's coordination session is an open work meeting between all the NRI's colleagues from uh, UNDESA, the chair of the MAG and the IGF secretariat, of course, also the wider IGF community, where we gather at the annual IGF meeting to discuss matters of interest for all NRI's, but also the uh, global IGF, the secretariat and the MAG, in order to strengthen the collaboration between the NRI's and the um, global IGF, and also with that strengthen the global IGF ecosystem. Uh, just very quickly uh, to touch upon some of the notes and questions that were shared during the first half of this day. Um, I first of all would like to thank everyone that reference to the value of the NRIs, which I think is very important. Uh, especially would like to thank the uh, UK government uh, for one particular reason. The gov and, and Ben, of course, the government of UK was very supportive toward the NRIs as a network for the past couple of years, and I'm saying this because I would like to recognize the role, very specific role of Mr. Mark Carvel uh, for the past couple of years with the NRIs, of course, with the National UK IGF. I think Mark retired this year, but hopefully he's going to continue joining uh, our meetings and working with us. Uh, I also would like to uh, maybe quickly ref reflect on Chennai's important question about the communication that the IGF has with the NRIs and also the NRIs with the IGF. So the NRI's mailing list is an open mailing list to everyone. Uh, we do communicate with the NRI's any updates and information of relevance for the global IGF uh, timely. We uh, recently, in this year, introduced the concept of a newsletter, which means that we are summarizing everything related to the process of the IGF 2019 and sending one, uh, once a month to the NRI's mailing list to have everyone updated. And also at the beginning of every month, uh, we will be sending. And also at the beginning of uh, every month, we will be sending, announcing the NRI's annual meetings that will be happening in that month. So hopefully that's going to help um, the communication between the NRI's and the and the IGF. Um, about how the NRI's help the IGF, especially in communication, which was a question that was asked by many. Historically speaking, the NRIs as a network were the largest contributors to the intercessional work. They are also the ones who are sharing all our calls and updates through their social networks and the mailing lists. Of course, voluntarily, there is no um, established mechanism on that, but maybe that could be something to work on and improve that mechanism. Uh, and we're very grateful for that. The IGF Secretariat, I believe, is doing similar for the NRIs by sharing the information on their annual meetings through our social networks and also through the mailing lists upon request. The goal for the NRIs collectively, also for the IGF Secretariat, is to strengthen the NRIs network. And in order to strengthen the NRIs network, you have to have uh, a certain set of objectives because you have to work and through interaction of all NRIs, uh, make them know each other 
exchange good practices, but also be very careful not to stay in our own silo, but actually be there outside and uh, create that friendly environment where we, we will be interacting as a network with other stakeholders. And in that sense, um, I think having the representation of the NRIs at the annual meeting is very important of the IGF. Uh, particularly what's very important uh, from a technical side for the NRIs as a network is the interpretation to six UN languages. Out of all main sessions last year, the year before, if you recall, the NRI's main session was the only session that actually used that resource. So uh, we had a number of speakers speaking on one of the six UN languages. What's very important, we also had a lot of interventions from, um, from the audience present online and on site also speaking on uh, one of the six UN languages. So I think that's a well spent um, resource for, for the IGF as well. The, Aside of the interpretation, the online participation is of extreme importance because many of the NRI's communities, especially developing countries, do face financial challenges in coming in person to the IGF, but they show interest, of course, to, uh, to the entire program, specifically the program that's been, um, that involves the um, NRI's relevant uh, component. And uh, maybe with that, I would uh, stop here uh, because I know uh, colleagues would like to come in and of course if you have any questions I remain at your disposal. Thank you. Thank you Anya for a very clear and always very informative introduction. So this is the NRI session. Um, certainly looking as Anya said to hear from the NRIs or any of the um, folks that are engaged with the NRIs in the room. Um, likewise, I think this is a good opportunity for us to have a discussion between MAG members and, and NRIs, so um, I wouldn't want to preclude that either. Roman, if people could say uh, their names, um, stakeholder group or organization, that would be helpful too. The uh, MAG members, Honorable Chair, Co-Chair, uh, Jeff Secretariat, DESA representatives. Uh, my name is Roman Chukov. I'm a MAG member from Russia. And um, following up uh, with what just Anya said, I would like to share uh, the results of the uh, Russian IGF forum, which just took place uh, on Monday in Moscow. And I'm very happy that uh, many people from here were, were there with us. We had really uh, interesting and diverse um, list of speakers and experts. I think totally it was around 20 international guests including uh, the uh, chair uh, of IGF Sec uh, Secretariat Chengitai, Masango, and um, uh, m many other people from ICANN, ISOC, from uh, high-level panel on digital cooperation, Dr. Johan Krubalia. We were really thankful for the German government who has kindly shared the invitation to Dr. Gunther Gratvoll, who represented a uh, chair country, a host country. And um, uh, what was really interesting, we had uh, also addressed uh, by President Putin, uh, who uh, paid a lot of attention to this forum. Um, and also we had um, uh, received an address by UN Deputy Secretary General Alison Smale. Um, and um, uh, with regard to uh, uh, presidential um, address. Uh, he, his main thought was that uh, Russia is a part of uh, global internet family and so that we will be always open to the uh, global community and I think this is very important and uh, also uh, we had not only a address uh, but uh, we had a speech of uh, our former Prime Minister and now uh, Deputy Chief Executive of Presidential Administration, Mr. Sergei Kiryankovich, uh, has also paid a lot of attention to contemporary internet uh, problems and uh, challenges which, are, um, you know, which we are facing. And what is really important, um, and this is something which I talked about last time, um, we have managed to make a final outcome document. Uh, which summarizes uh, main uh, outcomes of uh, main sessions. Uh, we had several sessions, including new technologies uh, and, and artificial intelligence, including uh, women in IT. Um, I was moderating the session on uh, quality and security of uh, data. 
and uh, uh, I think that I will just uh, send across uh, this document to all my members so that you can see uh, maybe um, very briefly I will just point out uh, what are the main ideas there so the core idea of the document is that we need new uh, social agreements and uh, that's uh, governments, IT community, users, technica technical companies uh, actually can uh, agree about shared responsibilities they take uh, and self-regulate each other uh, for instance in dealing with personal data and so on and in our session we were focusing on this um, what is also interesting, uh, maybe, uh, and some th this was actually uh, really well said by Patrick Penix, head of uh, Department of Information uh, Society of Council of Europe, who are now modernizing the convention, 108, uh, <coughs> that uh, uh, we can go with some soft law, but uh, in Europe, uh, soft law is already being accepted by uh, some courts and this is very interesting how some practices, uh, best practices which we have in different countries can actually um, help us to build this whole picture uh, of future global internet governance. So, um, what is also important um, in the documents of all participants, and I would like to underline that it was really diverse and multi-stakeholder as the core idea of IGF, um, it says that the Russian internet space is an integral part of the global network which should preserve its integrity and openness, giving states equal rights to manage its critical resources. The states shall guarantee their citizens uh, protection under its jurisdiction, ensure management, strategic sustainability and security of its uh, infrastructure, protection of the national market of IT products, as well as guarantee of innovation and openness. At the same time, uh, there was a call to transnational corporations to uh, actually follow the uh, law, legislation of countries, uh, ethic uh, principles, uh, pay all taxes, uh, which not um, every, every company pays, uh, not, uh, there are a lot of cases we've discussed in the forum. And uh, uh, the, the main idea is how to deal with uh, personal data protection. Uh, the, the document uh, stipulates for uh, three levels. When uh, cities um, ensure the safety of uh, users' data, transnational corporations uh, ensure uh, security of uh, data and they are accountable in front of the international community and states and uh, users and users themselves they should uh, uh, also pay a lot of uh, attention and responsibility where did they uh, put uh, their data and so on um, very important is the, um, to um, enhance uh, digital literacy uh, of population uh, and to help population to adapt to new technologies um, well, I think that I will not uh, spend uh, more time on this. I will simply send you the documents, uh, but uh, I hope that this will um, um, make us a little precedent how we can uh, finish the discussions with uh, some specific steps uh, many experts uh, agreed upon. And uh, maybe uh, we will see such formats uh, within German presidency uh, I think that we as MAC members can brainstorm on it, uh, how to make this maybe outcome document with some specific uh, call to actions to governments or to companies. So it's just uh, an idea how it can be and uh, thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much Roman, sounds like it was a very good event and certainly a lot to, to think about. Um, Marilyn, were you in the speaking queue or is that um, from earlier? Or maybe we'll reach out to Marilyn separately and and see. Um, are there any other NRIs that want to take the floor? Arnold, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn, and uh, good afternoon, all. My name is Arnold van Rijn from the Ministry of Economic Affairs uh, and Climate Policy in the Netherlands. Uh, I am a former MAC member 
but as the chair always says, always a, once a Mac member, always a Mac member. So I feel privileged to be back here into this room and see many familiar faces. Uh, apart from that, I'm also the uh, Eurodic uh, host team lead. And I would like to share a bit of information on this important event coming up. The European Dialogue on Internet Governance uh, will meet this year in The Hague on the 19th and the 20th of June. Uh, the program has been uh, fixed already and our organization teams are ready to fill this program further in, uh, together with uh, all the stakeholders uh, involved. Um, if you have time to visit the Eurodig website, I advise you please to do so because there are interesting uh, topics going to be on the agenda. Uh, there will be pre-events um, on uh, day zero, the 18th of June, and uh, to name a few of them, lots of attention uh, to, to uh, artificial intelligence. There are three consecutive sessions uh, on that day, but also the NRI assembly. <coughs> I have to mention that. Um, so um, lots of information on that day zero. And the first day and the second day of Eurodic 2019 will be dedicated to uh, lots of topics which you, of course, as MAC uh, members will be confronted with setting up the program for the IGF 2019. Uh, our plan is to, uh, to be a, a, a pillar from a European perspective between Paris and Berlin in, uh, in IGF language. As you all know, uh, President Macron I made a famous speech setting out uh, the, the, the way forward as he sees it. And uh, hopefully it will be picked up by uh, the next uh, uh, host of IGF 2019. And meanwhile, in, in The Hague, uh, we were trying to, uh, to contribute to this process uh, by putting out some uh, The Hague messages and to uh, feed it into the discussion in Berlin in November. That's our, our main task. Um, to uh, give some, some flavor of what the program looks like, uh, we will start with a welcome speech of the uh, uh, mayor of the city of uh, The Hague. Then we will have the Secretary General of Juridic uh, having some welcome words. And then um, we will have a, a pitch for an, an hour long on the uh, best practices in the Netherlands with regard to uh, the digital domain. So um, concrete examples based upon the multi-stakeholder approach uh, in the Netherlands, which uh, can be considered as a good practice. Uh, we are thinking of two concrete pitches and a moderator. And that will be, I think, with Q&As, with the public, uh, will last for an hour. And after that, our State Secretary of Economic Affairs will hold her opening keynote. It will be around 15 minutes. Of course, perhaps uh, also time for some uh, Q&As with the public. And uh, then we can start uh, uh, dealing with the other issues uh, in, the, in the program. One important uh, uh, issue to, to uh, as a first follow-up is the plenary session on digital, uh, uh, global digital governance uh, with the title, Can Technical Solutions Respond to Policy Questions? And I think here it is an interesting high-level panel session which we are working on uh, to discuss uh, issues like uh, more or less regulation, uh, multi-stakeholder approaches, uh, best practices in this field, uh, we even could uh, take on board some of the recommendations of the uh, uh, high-level panel on digital cooperation. I've spoken to, uh, to Jovan Kubaya uh, over lunch uh, with his ideas and uh, suggestions. Uh, he will do so in this forum. So um, interesting uh, ideas, I think, to, uh, to uh, uh, consider a, a journey to uh, The Hague. You're most welcome to, uh, to join us. And uh, we're also busy, quite busy, but that's the responsibility of the municipality of The Hague to uh, find a, uh, a suitable place for a social event. So you never know when we uh, uh, end up at the beach.
take your swimming suit with you because you know the Netherlands is a lowland country. We are living below sea level. You never know what the dikes are doing. <laughs> I hope they don't break, but uh, well, when the sun is shining, there's perhaps a chance to, uh, to visit the beach. Uh, Chair, I leave it by that, and if there are any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Arnold, um, both for all of your support to the IGF over, th over the years. And let me just check, um, Kavus, one second, because Marilyn's been in the queue for a while. Is, is Marilyn um, looking for the floor, or is that left over from before? From before? I, I just asked her, and she apparently is not paying attention or taking okay. uh, at the moment. So probably we can Quick just coffee pass to Raquel Gato. I don't know if keeping her in the queue. I've asked it through chat. So. Okay, so, so let me know. I'll go to Raquel Gatko, uh, Raquel. And then, Kavus, were you looking for the floor as well? So, Raquel, you have the floor. We're using an online speaking queue, so it levels the playing field between those that are participating here in the room and those that are online. I appreciate that that's not always possible when somebody's just coming in, so I will interweave them. So, Raquel, you have the floor, and then, and then Kavus. Raquel? Thank you very much, Lynn. Uh, on this high note about the beach, I needed to, <laughs> to comment on um, the LAC IGF, the preparatory meeting uh, from the Latin America and the Caribbean region. Uh, we are arriving uh, in our um, 11th uh, meeting for the LAC IGF, and it has just been announced uh, to be held the, on the 5th to the 9th of August in La Paz, Bolivia. So no beach there, but uh, <laughs> it's a lovely place. <laughs> Everybody is welcome. Um, and as usual, now the steering committee for the the, the, the organizing committee of the LAC IGF is um, uh, opening up the the call for um, for the community to send their um, issues and uh, to shape the the agenda. So we're in the early stages of shaping this agenda. And most likely just to react to some of the discussions here in the room is also very helpful to have the three tracks uh, and this is going to uh, influence the, the, the agenda also uh, in a good way uh, to uh, organize the, the LAC IGF agenda. And that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Raquel, both for the information um, but also for commenting on some of the other substantive topics that are in front of us here. Um, would like to hear more of that from the NRIs as well in terms of um, any thoughts you have with respect to deepening or broadening the participation, um, any thoughts you have with respect to the discussions we've taken to date um, with respect to the agenda or um, strengthening the outputs, um, the myriad of topics we've hit already. So please do take that into account. And Kavus, you have the floor. Yes, uh, thank you, Lynn. Uh, uh, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, uh, I'm very happy that I was uh, 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 informed that you have this session. I just pa passed by and you told me thank you very much. Uh, from the very beginning, I don't go to the history of the IGF, but from the very beginning, first of all, I'm speaking as one of the four billion internet users, not representing any country, any entity. Totally personal view, experience, and so on and so forth. So I had a lot of belief in national IGF. Before you go to up, you have to start from home, and home is national. You have to see what is the compositions of the national IGF. Do you have any information in any country they have national IGF? What is the constituency? Did they include everybody? Was it inclusive totally, technical community? Uh, the uh, uh, non-governmental government and so on and so forth, that was totally inclusive. Do you have that information? That will be very helpful. Then, uh, is there any information, any difficulty, problems that these people the established national IGF they faced and you could help them in order to remove that and in order to push them? The third question is that a list of the countries do not have yet national IGF and the reason why they don't have. Is there any problem, any obstacle, difficulties? It could be any help to them, encourage them, and so on and so forth. And fourthly, uh, perhaps it could be possible to uh, differentiate between national IGF and regional IGF, because region has a lot of meaning. Two or three countries could have a region, sub-region, and big area has a region. Whether you're talking ICANN region, ITU region, United Nations region, has a lot of differences with different cultures, different 
innovation, different uh, technical development, and so on and so forth, that perhaps it should be good. Uh, something that I want to suggest you that, I don't know whether you have it before or not, but it could be good that if it is not late for this year, we could have one or two theme every IGF. What is the concentration of the coming year on that? And lastly, that I talk to you informally, reduce the number of the workshops to the absolute minimum necessary in order to go more in depth of the situation, but not 10 to 15 minutes superficially, and so on and so forth. Go to real problems, difficulties to improve. If anything could be done in the governance of internet, that should be through these national, regional, and so on and so forth. Although we don't have any policy making arrangement, nevertheless, any idea exchanged among the people, some people, they take it up and put it elsewhere to different channel which help the, the process. Last but not least is the interactive. Please kindly try to make IGF interactive. Not the people coming on the podium and talk and talk and talk, and then at the end, any question? We have only two minutes, sorry, we don't have. Unless the people <laughs> come in and express their views, and there is exchange of views among the people, I think a passive lecture may not have effect as you want. Sorry, I don't want to take your time more than that. That is something that I could contribute to your session. Thank you. Um, Kavus, thank you very much. Really appreciate that. They said I was out at lunch looking for community members that I could pull in, and I happened to run into Kavus just outside the door here. I have just one or two quick um, comments to show, I think, some of the progress we've made here, and then um, I'll go to um, Mary and, and uh, Matt, Marilyn are in the queue, and then Anya, if there's anything specific that you want to address to some of the specific comments. Um, but we have reduced the number of themes. As you, as you know, in past years, we've had you know, eight, nine major themes. Um, this year, the MAG, working with the community, moved to three themes. Data governance is one, inclusion is another, safety, security, stability, and resilience is the third. Um, we also built a narrative around those themes that were meant to support the workshop submissions that would come in so that we can actually work concretely to advance those individual um, topics. For several years now, we've had um, a, a, a requirement within the, with the workshop organizers that half of the session is meant to be for engagement with the community. So half they can do presentations and, and you know, panelists and speakers, but half is supposed to be. Um, some of them do that very, very well, and some are even more interactive than that. Um, you know, there are still some who, who struggle with that a little bit, and I think that's on the organizers. It's also on all of us when we're on panels, too, to respect the, the time requirements and the organizers. But engagement is absolutely critical and, and something we're really trying to, to support there. Um, I think your other um, questions with respect to um, trying to understand more about what are the, some of the stats, what are the regions what are some of the NRIs that we have and where don't we have them, why don't we have them, what more can we do to support them, et cetera, is something um, we're all trying to step up to. We have a, a focal point within the IGF Secretariat, Anya Gengo, who does the work of at least 10 people. Um, and she'll have some of this information, and if not, we can certainly, I think those are excellent questions and um, sort of worthy of, of further discussion and, and um, distribution for where we have the facts. Um, but thank you very much for coming and, and for your input. Very, very helpful. Uh, Mary, you have the floor. Thank you, Jeff, for giving me the floor. Um, I will talk about two initiatives. One is the Nigerian IGF and then the West Africa IGF. If I will start with the West Africa IGF, we're going to run the, the 11th. West Africa IGF and uh, is going to hold in the Gambia. Um, yeah, it will be 22nd to the 25th. Um, the first three days will be our second uh, um, West Africa School of Internet Governance. We started last year, so we are doing the second one this year. And um, we had had support uh, from uh, partners to be able to run that. And the objective was that um, um, the African School of Internet Governance most, mostly is done in English. But at the West African level, we do it in um, both English and French, and we have interpretation. 
and those from the French speaking countries participate. We give them chance to participate at the at the School of Internal Governance. And again, they would also participate in the Internal Governance Forum. And uh, it had created a lot of uh, input that our regional organization, the West Africa um, e um, Economic Community, has not take, has not taken special interest in what we do at the IGF West Africa. And uh, this year, they're they, they, they supporting us on uh, the School of Internet Governance strongly, uh, although we still need other support from other people in order to bring more people to the school and to bring more people to the, to more participants to the, um, to the um, IGF itself. And um, normally, we, we do consultation within the region to be able to get, you know, to find out what people think we should be discussing. And we discuss issues that relate to what govern, governments around our country, because, around our region, because in our region, uh, the private sector is not as strong as the government. The governments are the, the movers and shakers of the, the economy. So we wanted them to support us strongly. And uh, uh, the other thing that has happened is that at the end of the program uh, of our event, I, uh, West Africa IGF, a communique is issued. And uh, this communique is taken up by the West African Economic Community to the, um, to the um, ministers of communications and ICT or economy to the heads of states of, uh, of West Africa. And so policies that are being rolled out around the, our region also take into consideration the recommendations that come from the West Africa IGF. So that's a strong output, and we we we, uh, and it has um, affected some of the things that we are, we are coming up with uh, at that region. Um, the second thing is that we have seen more participants, okay, uh, in the region coming up to join in the uh, Africa. I, uh, at the IGF level, so many of our uh, West African participants do come, all right. Um, some are supported by the um, OIF. I think OIF is uh, of a uh, Francophone organization. Most of them are supported by them to come for the IGF and uh, contribute and let their voices be heard. So, and um, that's what, and this year, as I said, we are going to do that as well and come out with a, a a communique. And um, um, what is important to us there is that we are looking at local issues. We could go, th the, the form and pattern could uh, mirror the, the global uh, IGF, but we discuss local issues so that uh, we get those local issues across, across our, our countries. And from here, some of the countries that have not been having their IGF processes have started. Okay, they've started having their IGF processes. And their heads of states now know, and their ministers now know the importance of the IGF, and they are encouraging them to, 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 to run their own initiative in the, in the West African uh, uh, region. So that is that for West Africa, so that I can quickly do that of Nigeria. In that of Nigeria, we are running our eighth IGF, and um, uh, this year it's July as well. But one thing that has come out from our IGF processes is that at the end of our event, we come up with a report, and we sense that we. We, we analyze it into what affects each of the stakeholder group. And send such, when we are sending a report, the cover, paper, uh, cover letter will state where we think they should do something. It's a recommendation, quite all right, but we can't force them to, to take it up, but would highlight the area that we think will affect the operation the stakeholder group, especially our government. So um, we have about three of them that um, we have the, the regulator, we have the development, ICT development agency, then we have the ministry itself. So we do raise issues with them. And when we, we raise those issues, because those are the things that are discussed by the participants from grassroots, and then we, give, we, give, we highlight those issues that we think they should take policies on. 
Um, the next thing we want to do now is to track those recommendations. How many of them are turned into policies? How many of them have they, have they implemented? If they've not implemented, can we do a follow-up, especially from those of them that are MAG members of uh, IG, uh, NIGF, so that um, they, they take it up with their organizations? So the, the the sector that we don't have strong, or the stakeholder group we don't have strong membership is the academia. And we are targeting academia seriously so that they will be part of it, part of our, of our, of our process. And uh, we are also going to run the first Nigerian School of Internet Governance. It will happen for three days, uh, the first three days, and then we we'll continue. Then we we'll do the youth IGF and then do the Nigeria IGF uh, by July 11. So in terms of um, strengthening the output, I think the, the question of being able to discuss local issues, coming up with recomm recommendations from the grassroots, what people think about it, and those issues that concern us in Nigeria. So, and we take it back to policy makers. And um, I'm happy that we, 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 the parliamentarians will be invited. Our parliamentarians do, do attend our um, Internet Governance Forum. Um, so this year, now that we have opportunity to, to bring them to, to Berlin, so that will encourage them to participate more. So we are, going to, we are going to take this conversation and this information back to them so that they will effectively participate. I think those are the things I will say for now. Thanks. Mary, thank you. That was very helpful. I mean, not only because it was interesting to hear about um, the the West African and the Nigerian IGFs. Um, but I think your comments as well with respect to what some of your own practices have been and what you're doing were very interesting, particularly as we've been grappling now for some time within the MAG about how much more we can do with respect to outputs and recommendations. And um, there are a number of people in the queue now. If the other NRIs can kind of comment on any other practices you have that you think are practices that would be either good um, learning experiences, um, for the global IGF, um, we're really, really looking forward very much for that. We've had a number of examples from Latin America and, and Europe over the, um, over the last few meetings. So we have Marilyn in the queue. Marilyn, I hope we can get the audio with no problems. I hope so as well. Well, I think we're still struggling to hear you, but evidently the scribes can. So um, please, please continue, and hopefully we'll get the volume here in the room. But in the meantime, with the scribes. what was going on. So, Tabush, you've been a fantastic host and mentor to many, many people. And uh, you may be new to others in the room, but uh, let me just thank you for coming and bringing this message up this afternoon. Um, let me move to engage with her going to update on IDF ESA on January 6th. Um, we have an extremely distributed information campaign. We have chosen, um, based on the community's input, we have uh, chosen eight topics. Uh, two of them will be campaign um, discussion topics. The rest will be workshops. I just want to note that we are um, very different from the other uh, organizations, and I feel the need to take a look and, and um, I want to recognize that we actually have uh, participants They are welcome and common and also help us to better understand the threat um, and teach the applicants that the IGF ESA can be effective globally. Um, this year, we have always had a focus on engagement that has been distributed. Uh, we have a, had a very strong commitment to a 
and um, I'll post the link to the previous report in the slide now. But this year we are continuing to have a survey looking at curriculum development. We also last year initiated a um, standard of uh, placeware around the country by email. We meet with various groups and try to create some build up interest in participating in the seminar itself. And we are very excited that many of our participants are coming from all over the country. I won't call all of them out, but um, here's one of my favorites, and I think you will like this one. Um, I am um, Susan Wren. years ago, the Western IGF invited the IGF USA to come up as a sister IGF. We've been a delegation of four people. I think it was a fantastic conference that didn't occur to us that we were siloed into a only go to the regional IGF. And so I wanted to always think very openly and positively about exchanges between the NOIs on topical that are driven by what the NOI themselves uh, find valuable. And I'll just say one other quick thing about Planned Parenthood. Several years ago, I was privileged to run the Planned Parenthood Society uh, Congressional Women's Summit. It is supported by feminist society um, and by business. And um, it has a very, very large U.S. Congress people. Um, please do let me know if you have any desire to chat, and I'll be happy to um, contact you privately. Uh, it has been a very beneficial and now multi-year um, relationship between multi-stakeholders and the um, Thank you, Marilyn. I'm very appreciative. <laughs> no, it, it, it was a really, a really good set of um, comments, um, and most of it was caught appropriately in the room. But there were quite a number of indiscernibles. Um, perhaps if you can just take a quick look through the transcript at some point and let the secretariat know. Um, it seemed to to cut off at the end just when you were getting to what the, uh, the key organization or, or partner was. Um, but thank you. That was a very good comment. And thank you. You've been here all day um, and yesterday as well for um, putting up with some of the audio video difficulties here. Um, Jennifer. Jennifer, you have the cue. The floor. Thank you, Chair, for giving me the floor. Um, Jennifer Chung, MAG member, but I'm going to be speaking with a different hat on right now as part of the Secretariat team of the Asia-Pacific Regional IGF. Um, so we've been very fortunate um, at the APRGF to have been hosted by Vanuatu last year, which was our very first time in the Pacific. And this coming year will be our 10th year, and it will be hosted in Vladivostok, Russia, um, in July from the 16th to the 19th. So 
well, first, congratulations to our Russian colleagues for having successfully hosting the um, Russian IGF that just concluded on Monday. So maybe extending the invite to all the participants if they would travel, you know, across quite a few time zones to the other part of the country, all the way to, you know, the eastern part. Um, we are very, very welcome to, you know, bring in the good discussion into a more regional context. It would be very um, useful and very fruitful. I think that would be very good. Um, the overarching theme um, is enabling a safe, secure, and universal internet for all in Asia Pacific. Um, also wanted to respond to our chair's questions earlier about how to bring in and engage more of the NRIs into the global context and vice versa. I think as a network we are really, really important and I think this has been recognized many times in, of course, our chair and also um, the secretariat and also, also the um, also the Secretary General of the UN as well. I think a good point that um, our colleague Cavus brought up was like, why do we not have an NRI in every country in the world? I think a really um, big thing is to recognize that the proliferation of the NRIs this, these coming years has gone from quite a few to, I think by last counting from Anya, it was 114 Please correct me if I'm wrong. And it's it's really due to the success of the the IGF, the success of of this um, type of forum where you are able to 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 talk about these things in a national context, in a regional context, and of course we're talking about the global context. Um, what m makes a regional IGF interesting, at least I'm talking about the Asia Pacific standpoint, is that a lot of the national IGF participants within our region do come to and bring their national perspectives. And I think there's a very good cross proliferation of ideas and best practices. And it's really useful for them to, to bring it to the regional context and they really bring it back to their home countries, their, their home nations. And in some cases, this has inspired them to start their own initiatives if they don't already have an initiative back home. I think th that's the case for Vanuatu. I think there's still information and many thanks to Anya for your great support, you know, to contact um, the, the people who are very interested in Vanuatu to start their own initiative. But I think this is very, very important. And I think you can think about it in a global context where you want the NRI network to come to the IGF because this is really the quite an evidence of, of the success of the IGF. And you want the um, cycle to be continued. You want to bring in the very good discussions that they're having, the grassroots discussions they're having um, in the national context to the global IGF and also see how in a global context when we're talking about the overarching themes, how this can also, um, within that context, you could listen to different um, national solutions to, to different issues. Um, recognizing that each NRI has its own processes and modalities and of course no one size fits all, the APR IGF has, for now, four years, has um, a synthesis document process. So what that is, is is part of a kind of outcomes, but it's not really a negotiated document at all. The process is completely open from beginning to end. It begins with when we um, poll the community for themes and issues they're most interested to listen to that year. It goes from there to the actual um, forum itself, where we have a town hall session um, at the end of each day to kind of reflect on the different uh, workshops, the different issues, different um, good conversations that the participants had to reflect it back into the document. So what we do is we, we really try to encapsulate the, the good conversation instead of you know having this becoming a, a negotiation document exercise. And um, the multi-stakeholder um, steering group that we have in the um, Asia Pacific Regional IGF, that um, group is also open to everybody in the community and um, they are very supportive of this exercise and there's also a drafting committee that's completely made up of volunteers also open to the community that you know spend a lot of time and volunteer their time to make sure this process goes through uh, vigorously every year. Um, I think this is just something that we could share at least from the Asia Pacific standpoint. I hope um, you know this could be just taken as a lesson but it's definitely not prescriptive in any way, shape, or form for any other NRIs. Just wanted to share this um, because, Chair, you were asking, you know, is there any outcomes or, or kind of lessons that we can learn from different NRIs? And I think this is one of um, a key innovation that we had that seems to work quite well for us, and we're going into our fifth year now. So maybe I'll just stop there for that. And also wanted to thank our host, um, 
uh, the German government for their very generous support. We're very excited that there is going to be a Global uh, South Fund that I'm sure a lot of um, participants, especially in the Asia Pacific region, would be very, very happy to, to you know, um, make use of. Thank you. Jennifer, thank you. That was also very interesting and, and very helpful. And I think the more we can understand what some of the you know, other practices are, are out there, the more we can find some that are really kind of purpose fit for the global IGF as well. So, so thank you for including that. Lucien, you have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Uh, Lucien Castex speaking. So I'm not speaking as a MAG member, but as a, as a co-chair of the French uh, NRI. Uh, the French NRI will be held in Paris on July 4th, and they will be not a day zero, but sort of event partners as uh, the day before. So it's kind of a day zero, but it's not exactly that. As the organization uh, is still ongoing, so we are uh, basically trying to draw from the output of last year French IGF and obviously from uh, also the, the outputs of the global IGF. So. Uh, one uh, of the document that we, we are using is the Paris messages, uh, both the IGF Secretariat version of the Paris messages and the messages issued after the Paris IGF by the French community. So we are st starting from, from there. And then we have an ongoing call for issues so that the community can uh, put forward some, some topic of interest that they want to discuss at the French uh, level. Uh, so far, uh, the main identified topic are basically, uh, of course, in, a, in the wake of the Paris call for cybersecurity, cybersecurity data protection, including uh, IoT, an IoT perspective, and best practices. So the idea is to go forward uh, with the Paris call and try to, to, well, to understand how to, to improve it. Also, um, one of the, of the key thematic is internet fragmentation, uh, with a particular focus on regulation, considering, uh, for example, that in the global context, in France, we have a bill on hate speech uh, being discussed uh, at, at, at this time. We had we are with a law on, on fake news last year, and there is also a lot of regulation uh, at the European level, I mean, Euro European Union, obviously, and we are in the global context of G7 discussions. So, you know, uh, it's quite interesting in this, uh, in this context. Um, also, uh, as I said, it will be held in Paris, but we are trying to uh, do some outreach to other communities. So to do so, we are putting together local hub in, uh, in France, in other cities. So we will try to have, I don't know, like five or six, uh, so that people can participate, but still be on site, not only remotely. And we will be trying to improve uh, the remote uh, participation by having dedicated people uh, on each workshop in plenaries. Um, last point, um, we will have a dedicated use track uh, so that the, use the, the young people can uh, directly uh, be involved in the process and also, as it was in uh, last IGF in Paris, try to have volunteers for rapporteur position uh, for each workshop and also, obviously, uh, for the whole process. I uh, would like to conclude very quickly by, by saying that I fully support, obviously, uh, strengthening the, the network of IGF. It's quite, uh, it's quite strong to First, obviously, uh, speak about internet governance and re related digital issues in the local context. But also, it's quite, uh, it's quite important to bring forth local ideas and local issues to the global context. Thank you. No, thank you. Thank you, Lucien. Also very, in very interesting. Um, I did want to make one point earlier. I forgot when Arnold um, van Rijn from the Dutch government was talking. Um, the BPF on cybersecurity is also looking at the Paris call for trust and security in cyberspace as well as one of their um, components. So I hope there's really good coordination between there and um, and I'm sure within the French NRI there is there is as well. Um, not that it's only French in the Netherlands, of course, that was actually a global call, but 
um, to make that, that linkage. Uh, let's see, next in the queue we have Liana. Liana, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn, for giving me the floor. Um, Liana Galstan speaking. Uh, they would say mic member, but I would speak uh, on behalf of the, on my capacity of Armenia IHF and also the CDIC. Uh, so uh, as for the Armenian IGF, uh, we will have uh, our fifth meeting uh, this year, but we haven't decided yet the date. Uh, it's been challenging. Uh, we uh, Every year we try to have it uh, um, together with uh, one of the major event in the country. So this year we will have the uh, World Congress on Information Technology in October in Armenia. So we are in collaboration in uh, discussions with the host organizers uh, to see uh, whether we can do that in this framework, uh, then that would uh, definitely invite, um, bring many participants to the local IGF as well. Um, for what we're doing very specifically, and um, that, that is very uh, interesting for the national perspective, uh, the, the School of Internet Governance. I mean, I, I see uh, many countries has this uh, exercise, um, this capacity building, and I find that this is very important, uh, especially for developing countries that uh, not everyone knows what is Internet Governance. So. We had already two years uh, of uh, school on internet governance, and uh, as a direct uh, income uh, or the output of uh, that school that we uh, had uh, was that the alumni of school, uh, they want to establish the youth IGF already. So they are very interested in um, in the topics and the process of IG, and they want to have the, their own discussion. Uh, so they want to establish that uh, this is a, in a discussion already, and they contacted the uh, secretariat to Anya, and they wanted to have their own program for this year, definitely. Uh, and also, as an Armenia IGF, we participated as a best practice forum on local content, and we find that it's very interesting for us. Um, we're very much interested in uh, uh, IDN issues because we have our um, own script, and we're very keen to make it popular in the country and in diaspora as well uh, for all Armenian uh, language users. Uh, and um, as for the uh, um, steering group, uh, it's we do not call it steering group. We have the uh, Internet Governance Council. Uh, it's permanently working uh, council in the country, and it's a multi-stakeholder. But we do have rotation on the stakeholder participants, uh, so we give the opportunity different uh, groups to come and participate and bring their perspectives. But we make sure that uh, we have all stakeholder group representatives representatives there. And it also gives some consultation uh, to the legislative uh, bodies, uh, so on different topics that are emerging for the country to coming. So we're not waiting for those topics to be decided, uh, discussed at the forum only. Uh, so, uh, and uh, on behalf of the CDIC, what we're doing, we will have the fifth meeting this year, fifth anniversary, um, as a sub-regional uh, initiative, uh, a very, um, uh, also in the capacity development things that we have, uh, we have the youth school uh, also, and also the fellowship. Uh, so we give different programs, and different uh, type of opportunities, a capacity building for uh, participants to come and participate. And um, what is also important on CIDIC um, to me is that we do not keep the boundaries on the region. We keep it very open. We see southeastern Europe and neighboring areas, and we invite all those who are who um, uh, can. Um, demonstrate, uh, uh, say about themselves that they uh, belong to this region, uh, they are absolutely uh, welcome to, to join our meetings and be part of the CDIC. Uh, and this year we also uh, launched a program of ambassadors, ambassadors programs, uh, and uh, basically those who've been uh, previously fellows or youth school participants, 
they uh, came, we, we came with this initiative of this program that uh, they need to spread the word about the CEDIC, what we're doing, about the process, and uh, whatever, all, all the intersessional activities that we're doing, they're spreading in different countries. And um, this is very interesting, and they're very uh, enthusiastic about their work and actually it works very well for the city itself and uh, as, a, as I mentioned about uh, intersessional activities we also have newsletter we have uh, editors uh, very um, and all the work is being done voluntarily so the a group of uh, editors they uh, gather information about the region uh, on IG issues and uh, we every month uh, we publish in and spread that over the region so uh, it's absolutely very interesting for all those who want to know what's happening in the region and what policy development is happening there uh, and also for this year for CD uh, we collaborated with the uh, DC of um, DNS issues um, so we will have a session particularly for the uh, universal acceptance readiness and IDN issues, uh, so we will have this discussions with the CCTLD operators and also governmental representatives on the scripts uh, of the Dow Latin. So this is basically what I wanted to update. Thank you. Liana, thank you. Another very rich another expose of activities there. That's very, very interesting. Thank you. We next have Raul Echeverria. <coughs> Raul, you have the floor. Raul, are you speaking? <laughs> if you are, we can't hear you here in the room. Can you hear me now? Uh, yes, faintly. quite low, but yes. Okay, thank you. That's the, the transmission from there. It's not, uh, it's not stable. <laughs> um, oh, okay, that is very, uh, very interesting to receive all those reports from different uh, initiatives uh, from all around the world different flavors of uh, meetings, initiatives, and the kind of work. Um, having said that, let me uh, make a general comment on, on regional and national IGFs uh, now. That as one of the, of the most interesting things about the national IGF is that national IGF are closer from the uh, policy making. This is most 90, 95% of the policy making uh, happens at the national level. Is, uh, this is the, really the opportunity to influence uh, uh, with the multi-stakeholder uh, models the, the, the policy making. Uh, so this is one thing that I think that we, we should um, uh, consider to include in the, in, in the sessions in, uh, in, in, the, in the IGF in Berlin is to know more about what are the, the successful experiences of national IGFs uh, influencing the policy making. And this is, uh, this is also a, a, another way to demonstrate the, the, the importance of this uh, IGF ecosystem. When some people uh, expect or criticize or at least uh, express some hesitation about the, the IGF uh, because the lack of, uh, of concrete uh, impact on policy making, this is one of the ways that we are influencing the policy making around the world is that uh, through the whole ec uh, ecosystem. So it would be very interesting. I think that the, the, what the colleague from France has uh, presented, for example, it's a, I would like to know more, but it, it looks like there is a concrete experience of influencing the policy making on a given topic. And this is one of the things that we should um, know more about. And the other one, the one that I, I already say before, that is the, the, uh, the different uh, models of producing outcomes. And I think that's the, the presentation from Jennifer was very interesting. And, um, we are always learning from from different experiences and of those um, important uh, initiatives. So thank you very much. Raul, thank you. That was a, a very good um, a very good comment. And I think that's a really interesting idea. Um, you know, we always say in the IGF that you know we're here to inform dialogues and to 
um, share experiences and to help build frameworks and understanding and that sort of thing. But clearly the policy making takes place at national and regional levels. Um, and a number of the NRIs that spoke actually did reference their work with the policy makers. And um, it would be interesting if there was some, some interest in terms of trying to understand what sort of good practices or examples there were, that, where they've been successful, um, you know, if there's anything that we can can take away and either use to support other NRIs or even, frankly, learn ourselves as we actually work with the NRIs within within all our activities. I think that would be really, um, really interesting. Um, we don't have anybody else in the, the queue at the moment. I will go back to, um, we do need to finish up in, in like, 10, 15 minutes um, in terms of getting uh, the, the other um, speakers and entities in. Um, but Anya, if there's anything you want to um, conclude on or come back on, or if there's anything else at all that you'd actually like to put on the table in front of the MAG um, discussion today, if we can, and if not, we can certainly take it forward. So you have well, the floor. Thank you very much. There were a couple of questions, so maybe I'll just take the floor to quickly respond, especially on uh, how many countries don't have the national IGFs. I think it's important to say that neither the IGF Secretariat, neither the MAG sends requests for forming the national or regional IGFs. These are, even the requests are of a bottom-up nature. But we do have those statistics, how many member states don't have national IGFs. So it's actually very interesting to look because for African region, you would say that the coverage is around 43 percent. For Eastern Europe, quite high, 61 percent. Then for Asia Pacific, it's very low, 19 percent. Grulak is 58 percent of coverage, and Vyong is 57 percent of the national IGFs. But we're very happy to have the sub-regional and regional IGFs with a very good uh, geographical spread. And actually, many of the national IGFs, with their specific, of course, rule and independent processes, are inspired by either the global IGF or by, by the uh, regional or sub-regional IGFs. Uh, for the IGF process, I think for years we've been learning from the NRIs, just as the NRIs uh, from, from the global IGF. So in that sense, I can just remind maybe that the call for issues that the IGF has produced was actually inspired by uh, some um, regional and national IGFs. The same is with the concept of the messages. Uh, that was introduced in 2017 by the uh, host country, Switzerland, which was inspired actually by their national IGF, but also some uh, primarily, I believe, European regional IGFs and, uh, and other national IGFs. So we could actually maybe form a couple of questions as the global IGF toward the NRIs and ask concretely how things can be improved, especially in terms of communication or what you mentioned about the, um, the quality and visibility of the outputs. And the same thing would go, which I think is very important for the outreach. The NRIs are, have very specific practices in doing the outreach. I, yesterday I mentioned some, and I think uh, probably we don't have time, but it would be good maybe just to uh, put it for the record there, that many of the national and regional IGFs are aware that their processes are concentrated in bigger urban centers, usually in the capitals and so on, and that it's very difficult to reach those that live in remote areas. So sometimes, and that practice is actually uh, happening more often with the NRIs, they tour the country or the region physically. They go into various schools at various universities. They engage with different communities in the uh, local communities, in, in the various cities, villages, where they try to introduce the concept of the digital technologies and what uh, those can do for first of all, sustainable development, but also for the inclusion and so on. So I think uh, learning from those practices would be great. The Secretariat is actually working on, a, uh, on one publication where we will gather those practices and uh, try to kind of visually present them to the community, how those, um, how those practices are implemented in various um, NRI levels. Yes. Thank you. Anya, I think that's great. And it's actually earlier I'd written down inclusion um, with respect to learn from the NRIs, because of course there was certainly something which we all care about. It's one of our main um, three themes this year, and um, was also a request from the Secretary General to um, look towards what we can do to increase. Um, so it was interesting, um, and look forward to seeing the report too. So the the speaking queue is um, is empty. Um, 
I think one of the things that might be more helpful in terms of kind of increasing the bandwidth, if you will, between um, the NRIs and the MAG or the NRIs and the various intercessional activities is um, probably to do some pre-planning for these sorts of agendas and meetings so we can understand from the NRIs what would be helpful to talk to the MAG about or talk to the other intercessional activities about and vice versa, what you know the MAG would like to um, know more about from the NRIs, what are some of the experiences we can, can learn from and those sorts of things and maybe be a little more um, programmed in terms of that um, that relationship, particularly because when you run consultations against multiple countries, that actually takes some time. It's probably, I don't know, four to six weeks or something for a, a, a reasonably paced consultation process um, with the number of people that we engage to the NRIs. And I'm not actually sure the MAG is that much <laughs> faster uh, um, either. But um, I think we should keep that in mind, which means we need to get started now for the June um, June MAG meeting, but um, I think this exchange has been really helpful and not only appreciate all the input on the the activities themselves, but I think um, sharing some of the, the learnings and some of the practices that talk specifically to um, some of the things we've been um, addressing here within the MAG. Um, so I'd like to thank everybody for that. Um, we would now Actually, we didn't, Raquel, I'm not really putting you on the spot because it was on the agenda, but the one thing we didn't get to earlier was gender and access BPF update. We had asked everybody to give um, a brief update, sort of three to five minutes, and then to see if there were other questions or comments from the room. We'll finish that, and then we're going to go to um, some uh, individual contributions from related and relevant Internet in initiatives. Thank you. For, oops. Okay, <laughs> thank you very much, Lynn. Uh, just to briefly update that the MAG approved the best, the continuation of the best practice uh, forum on gender and access. Uh, the first one was in 2015, uh, sorry, 2015, based on online violence um, and gender-based violence online. Uh, the second one identified the barriers for accessing the internet, and uh, over the, the the next two three years we've been dealing and, and, and dipping on some of those issues. Uh, we went to the challenges that uh, in 2017, to the challenges that uh, the, um, uh, the women's groups have to, to uh, and the needs to access the internet, and in 2018, uh, the connectivity models that would bring this uh, gender uh, uh, digital equality. And uh, this year, uh, the MAG has also that has approved the continuation, uh, also looking at the digital inclusion and uh, the the future of work. Uh, what are the digital skills that um, and, and the barriers and uh, the enablers for uh, fostering the digital skills uh, on uh, women and girls uh, that would bring them into this. Um, Digital Economy Society. Uh, and uh, I have my co-facilitators from the MAG. Uh, Maria Paz is not here, and uh, Chennai. Uh, and uh, we are just uh, preparing. I think we have the list now, and we are going to have the kickoff meeting soon. Thank you, Raquel. And Chennai is here, in the far back of <laughs> the room there. Are there any um, comments or questions or anything else, Jenna, you'd like to add? And then I'm not sure, Chengatai, are you going to walk us through the list of the related, relevant initiatives or organizations that are? Um, I don't actually see Nigel here in the first one. Um, so I'm going to go through the list that. Um, Tangatai is composed here on the understanding that that's the list, that's the order people thought they were going to be speaking in. I don't know if that's true or not, but I don't see Nigel Hickson from ICANN here. Um, so move to him afterwards. Um, I also don't see Jane Coffin. Oh, <laughs> right next to Reco. So Jane Coffin from my side. Jane, you have the floor. Thank you, Lynn. Um, just a super brief update for um, colleagues here. 
And um, for those of you that don't know me, I work on infrastructure and connectivity issues at the Internet Society. Um, someone had mentioned earlier that the output of WSIS was to encourage multi-stakeholder processes to develop bottom-up governance, uh, more communities of interest and sustainability of the infrastructure and those communities. This is uh, an absolute focus of the Internet Societies, and many of our programs this year sync up extremely well with this, two out of three of them, actually. So on the IGF theme of inclusion, we work with communities to build local internet infrastructure, internet exchange points, and to train people technically to sustain and maintain that infrastructure. We also are working and have been speaking about here community networks, bottom-up community um, built infrastructure run for, by, with communities. Um, on the security side, one of our major programs this year is the Mutually, uh, mutually Agreed Norms for Routing Security, or MANNERS where we're working with operators around the world to try and encourage more security of network routing. Um, we also have a focus on encryption through our policy team and through our technical team. Overall, um, part of what we do is the bottom-up governance, working through communities of interest with our chapters, with our organizational members, and again, communities in general, to promote that internet way of working, network to network, person to person. Um, our new CEO, Andrew Sullivan, often remarks that we need to work the way the internet works, uh, from network to network. So we just thank you very much. We're committed to working uh, with NRIs through the IGF and with all of our colleagues and stakeholders. And if anyone's interested, we do do a lot around the world with our partners to build the infrastructure, promote the communities, and train people. Thank you. Might be one opportunity there to get to those previously underserved communities <laughs> um, from an IGF initiative. Uh, the next um, speaker is uh, Victor Awad from the World Intellectual Property Organization, WIPO. Victor? Very good afternoon, dear colleagues, and thanks very much once again for giving WIPO this opportunity to address the meeting. I will be very brief in my intervention and only mention three updates which may be of interest to the IGF community. Firstly, I would wish to highlight that the Marrakesh Treaty administered by WIPO gained its 50th member in February. The Marrakesh Treaty promotes the worldwide availability of texts that are specially adapted for use by persons with visual or print impairments. The joining of the United States to the Marrakesh Treaty in February gives a major boost for increased access to English language texts in accessible formats for people living with print or visual disabilities around the world. We are very pleased about this and are working hard for more ratifications. Secondly, the 38th session of WIPO Standing Committee on Copyright and Related Rights, SCCR, met last week in Geneva. The SCCR is a multilateral forum where governments meet to discuss matters of su substantive law or harmonization in the field of copyright and related rights. The 38th session made significant progress on the protection of broadcasting organizations, as well as limitations and exceptions in the area of educational activities, libraries, and disabilities. These issues continue to be of great importance for many IGF stakeholders. Thirdly, colleagues, uh, WIPO cyber squatting cases grew by 12% in 2018 to reach a new record. Brand owners from 109 con countries filed a record 3,000 plus cases under the uniform domain name dispute resolution policy within WIPO. This shows the increasing challenges faced by businesses online and the need for vigilance against the proliferation of websites used for counterfeit sales, fraud, phishing, and other forms of online abuses. With these brief updates, I thank you for your attention and wish the MAG fruitful discussions for the remaining day. WIPO remains committed to the IGF process and looks forward to working with you, all of you, to contribute to the next IGF meeting. I thank you. Victor, thank you. That was a very um, interesting um, presentation, and we really appreciate the continuing support um, and engagement and involvement from WIPO. Um, I understand we just approved a new dynamic coalition this week, which I was quickly trying to look up here to see if there was any. Um, Sorry, um, you were probably looking for uh, the the information on the new DC and, and and its name. It's it's not published yet because we're still working with the DC on some of the the, the details, um, but.
Sure, sure. Yeah, it's it's um, a new DC on the sustainability of uh, journalism and the news media. Uh, and actually, we have a um, a representative of the Global Forum for Media Development, Michael Ogio, who is online and um, ready to make an intervention on uh, on the work of GFMD, and and he may also say a few words about the new DC. Excellent. Thank you, Eleanor. And again, I couldn't quite remember whether or not there was a, a, a nice relationship or a good fit with the, the work of WIPO, which is why I was trying to, uh, to find it on the site. Um, if M Michael is there, we can go to Michael now. If that's not Michael Ogia, he's online. Louis? At least by trying to get him in early, we have some recovery time. I mean, he's unmuted, but I'm not sure he's aware he's being called. Okay, why don't we work that in the background then, and we'll just go to the sure. next. Thank you, Luis. Valentina. <laughs> Valentina, you have the floor for the European Commission. Thank you. Thank you very much, Lynn. Uh, Valentina Sharpi from the European Commission, for the record. Um, first of all, the European Commission would like to thank the MAG and the IGF Secretariat for their relentless work and welcome especially the new developments on the strategic multi-year program prepared by the working groups. On our side, we're working along the same line of reflection that I'm hearing coming from the community during this meeting in these days. For our last high-level group on internet governance, that for your information is a meeting that we organize three times a year with member states and other stakeholders, some of these stakeholders being in the room right now, including Chengetai, who participated in the last one. We have prepared the position paper that we have shared with the participant to the meeting and invited them to comment. These inputs will inform our future strategy on internet governance that most likely will lead to a new commis commission communication on internet governance early next year. O however, this of course will depend a lot on the outcomes of the European Parliament election next month, which will then be paramount for the nomination of our new commission. I am happy to share with you the outcomes of our multi-stakeholder expert group on artificial intelligence that has published two days ago ethical guidelines for artificial intelligence that European private sector and public institutions will now have as a reference when working in this area. Um, to this point in particular, I will follow up on the discussion that we were having yesterday on what sort of outcomes the IGF shall produce and in what forms. And we believe that for policymakers, it will be extremely useful to have outcomes in the form of guidelines, such as the one produced by this expert group on AI, that would inform the action of policymakers. If we look at the Paris messages produced by the IGF Secretariat, these um, are a bit too high level to be translated into any policy. It was interesting to see that from Paris we actually had two different sets of messages, one coming from the IGF Secretariat and one from the French government itself. And the latter were already a bit more focused than the one produced by the Secretariat. With that said, um, we might consider even producing two different types of outcomes. One more aimed at informing the general public, like the message we produce until now, and thus very high level, and one more focus addressing more specialized audience like the policy maker and tech industry. Last but not least, I would touch upon a point that I know is always critical for the IGF, but at the same time maybe a good news, which is that we managed this year to secure our contribution for the coming two years until the end of 2020, and to upfront most of the contribution in 2019 already. Thank you. Thank you very much, Valentina. It's it's interesting question. I think uh, interesting comment with respect to different types of outputs and goes to the discussion yesterday as well, which is trying to understand which audience we're trying to reach with each activity at the at the IGF. I think Venny, you're asking to come in. Yes, uh, just to mention, I was texting Nigel, so he'll be 
coming shortly. He understood that uh, this is going to be discussed around 5.30, so he's in some bilateral, but he's coming uh, soon. And because uh, I wasn't in Kobe, which is the thing that happened at ICANN meeting uh, between our previous meeting and today, I can't really talk about it. So he'll be here shortly. Okay, thank you. That, that's fine. Um, don't want him to interrupt his bilateral meeting either, so we can show some flexibility and do it at the end of the session if that's, that's better. Uh, thank you, but I'm sure he would uh, be more than happy to interrupt his, but no, just kidding. <laughs> I just wanted to cheer up people here and how important our meeting is. I'm glad we're on the plus side of that. <laughs> Tamea, uh, Tamea, ICC basis. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Timi Oshuto. I'm uh, a MAG member, but um, at this moment in time, I'm representing the International Chamber of Commerce, um, which is the world's largest business organization, um, representing more than um, 45 million companies around the world in over 100 countries. Our core mission is to make business work for everyone, every day, everywhere. And we do that through a unique mix of advocacy, solutions, and standard, standard setting. Um, and we promote international trade, responsible business conduct, and global approach to regulation, in addition to providing um, dispute resolution services. Our member in members include many of the world's largest companies, um, SMEs, business, asso business associations, and local chambers of commerce. Um, and I wanted to highlight two um, main activities that we, that we have coming up this year. Um, all chambers of commerce that are ICC members are also members of um, ICC's initiative, um, that is called the World Chambers Federation, um, uh, that was established by ICC to be the advocate of um, Chambers of Commerce um, members worldwide. Um, and the World Chambers Federation organizes a congress every two years. Um, and the 11th uh, one of that uh, is taking place this June um, in Rio de Janeiro, um, between 12th and 14th of June, um, which is the largest chamber event featuring more than 1,000 delegates from 100 countries. And this year's Congress will take place under the theme Creating a Shared Future, and will touch upon um, issues like smart cities, trade and digital economy, SME entrepreneurship and digital economy, um, inclusive infrastructure and skills for the global economy. Um, so uh, if, um, if this is of interest of you, please feel free to let me know and I can share more details. Yes. Uh, and on our work directly related to internet governance, um, innovation, as you know, is, is very important for, uh, for ICC um, and we've been with our basis project present in the internet governance discussion since uh, the WISIS process started in 2003 and 2005. Um, we are also part of the WISIS Forum that is taking place right now uh, in the rooms adjacent to this one. Uh, we will have a workshop tomorrow um, uh, on digital entrepreneurship to bridge the connectivity gap, uh, where we will discuss uh, business initiatives uh, and public-private pri partnerships um, that uh, are meant to expand connectivity um, in hard-to-reach and remote areas um, and uh, directed towards vulnerable groups. So that will take place tomorrow at 4.30. Um, if you are interested, you're all welcome uh, and very warmly invited. And of course, uh, a large part of our work is, uh, is to support business participation and engagement in the IGF itself. So my colleagues are right now very busy working on submitting the proposals uh, for the IGF workshops by the end of this week. Um, we will have um, a couple of proposals for day zero events as well. Um, and as always, um, we will make sure to um, invite uh, our network uh, and coordinate business participation um, in the IGF. So in a nutshell, this is what we're working on right now. For any other questions, I'm happy to um, discuss after the meeting. Thank you. What? Hartmut? <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully some good discussions as well, but yes. <laughs> Thank you, Tamea. Um, is Michael able to... No, not at the moment. He's commuting um, at the moment. Okay. So he doesn't have a stable connection, but maybe in five, ten minutes. Is there a document he can send us that we can have read into the record? Maybe we you can, can just chat check that in the, yeah, in the background. Yeah. Thank you, Louis. Um, so we have Marco Lotti from Diplo. Marco, you have the floor. 
Thank you. Thank you very much for giving the Geneva Internet Platform the possibility to speak about our contributions to the Internet Governance Policy Discussions and the IGF. As said, I'm Marco Lotti from the Geneva Internet Platform, and my intervention will be very brief as well. And among all the initiatives that I'm going to tell you about, I think I will start with reporting, which is probably one of the most important ones. We report from the main digital policy-related events happening in Geneva and around the world when, of course, uh, possible. In fact, here at WISIS, we are reporting from all the thematic workshops throughout the week and publishing the reports online afterwards. This is also what we did last year in Paris, and where we covered about 90% of the sessions and published the reports on our website, the Digi Digital Watch Observatory, that you can visit at the dig.watch. What we did with these reports was to produce daily summaries, what some of you may know as IGF dailies, summaries of the discussions that took place every day in Paris. It's the same as a small newspaper. Then we compiled them in a final comprehensive report covering IGF as a whole. I'm happy to underline that for the first time last year, our final report included also an in-depth data analysis on the content, topics and words that were most relevant in the discussions, be it cyber, be it data, fake news, so on and so forth. This year we are planning to run the reporting initiative again during the IGF in Berlin, and in the meantime, in preparation for Berlin, we are planning to continue our analysis throughout the year on the Digital Watch website, to continue reporting from the main digital policy related events, as well as continue organizing discussions in Geneva, Brussels and Washington. In Geneva, for example, we are planning to continue our thematic discussions on digital policy issues, and one example of them are our data talks, meetings specifically focusing on data application and, uh, applications and data projects for and by international organizations in Geneva. Finally, we will also continue with our monthly online briefings, which anyone can join online every last Tuesday of the month, these briefings compile the main IG uh, developments of the previous 30 days, and their content is also published at the beginning of each month in our newsletter. To close, for other locations, we will also organize thematic dialogues, uh, dialogues regularly. For example, early this year we had a discussion on AI and diplomacy in Brussels, where we also launched our related publication. AI and policy, in fact, we believe it to be one of the key topics for 2019. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. I've actually had the pleasure of attending one or two of those meetings and reading the reports, and, and they really are really are informative. Thank you. I'm, I'm talking about the reports that Diplo publishes. Obviously, the IGF documents and reports are, are very good as well. So is there any word from Michael? No. Okay. Well, we'll we will. Um, no, he didn't answer to our request for a document, but he will probably. He's probably I, I'm, in, yeah, I'm, I'm in the sure. building or something. <laughs> I'm sure he will. Um, well, if we get it, we can try and bring him in or read it out later in the document. I didn't see Nigel come in from while I was looking the other way yet, um, and we're waiting for um, Yovan to come in at five o'clock for the HLPDC. What we could um, maybe do. Oh, oh, sorry, Mamadou. Okay, Mamadou, you have the floor. Just for Geneva Internet Platform, I just wanted to say that I am <laughs> I am one of the creators. I am following the multilingualism issue and uh, the idea of trends. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mamadou. Um, are there any? Um, is there anything the MAG would actually like to follow up on with respect to the, the um, contributions we've just, just received? Any questions for um, further ways we can collaborate? Um, any questions they have for us or MAG has for them? Just so we give Jovan a few minutes to get settled here. Is there anybody else in the room who would like to make a, a contribution as well? Um, we do ask for people to notify ahead of time, but we're not that um, inflexible. No, okay, well, maybe we'll just take a in-place stretch break <laughs> and, and um, give you a minute to catch your breath and 
for your sunglasses to come to indoor color, yeah. I think. <laughs> I At the moment, it. I know. <laughs> but it, it looks more mysterious. You know? <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly. I'm not sure we need more mystery in this particular topic, but, but you know, I appreciate the consistency. <laughs> no, ser seriously, we can just take a minute, Jovan. I'm sure people don't mind just taking it in place, um, in place stretch bake. We're a little bit ahead of time. Okay. You ready? So we have we have um, basically up until six o'clock if um, you need it or you <laughs> or, or you want the time. Um, so I mean, just just to know that we actually do have um, adequate time for the discussion and very much appreciate your coming. I know um, <laughs> Yvonne's been in one meeting after the other because I've seen him sitting in the CICG cafeteria with um, various people going through. And in fact, some of us were one of those this morning first thing. <laughs> So thank you, Jovan. Yeah, we started at, uh, well, 8 o'clock. And uh, really, it's, it's great to be today uh, here. Thank you. Thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Daniela. Thank you, for inviting me to ad address you today. Uh, well, I know that there are quite a few questions that uh, are open and the questions to be asked about uh, special inter interplay between the panel and the Internet Governance Forum. For the, since there is, there is still some sun outside, uh, I would uh, try to keep it uh, short and leave you some, give you some time to go and uh, enjoy lovely Geneva weather, which is not, not typical. Uh, I guess that you are familiar with the, with the panel, what panel is doing. Uh, you have been uh, hearing two briefings uh, from my colleague. I would like just to, to provide a few uh, points which are of relevance for our uh, discussion today. In the timeline, the panel was established in um, um, July last year. We had the first meeting in uh, September. In New York, the second meeting in Geneva in January. And we have the last informal meeting uh, last week in Helsinki. The panel is an uh, independent expert group appointed by the UN Secretary General. And it is very important to keep the formal status of the panel uh, clear. It is appointed by the UN Secretary General to provide him with advice about the future of digital cooperation. Our mandate is to submit a report to the Secretary General at the end of May, beginning of June, which he can um, uh, consider for the further action. He can, I hope he won't do it, he can throw it into the dustbin, or, uh, or, uh, or uh, he can suggest the next steps according to his, his discretion. Now, based on the discussion and consultations that we have been having over the last uh, eight months, th there is a clear build-up uh, around the inclusion. And Secretary General have, has pointed on the few occasions that he would like to have the inclusive uh, debate on the, about the report of the panel and possible uh, follow-up steps. This is the, this is the overall. Uh, uh, spirit and the, we can uh, clear any any question about the formal status of the panel in our discussion. Uh, the report, which is the f uh, output of the panel's activities, consists of the um, uh, consists of three major elements. The first is uh, framing of the discussion around the values that digital cooperation should support, values and principles. Most of those values and principles uh, have been uh, codified in the various UN documents, uh, internet governance, uh, spirit of internet governance community since the early days. Therefore, we are trying to codify them and to say, okay, here are the values and principles somewhere in the, in the cloud as a general guiding issues and to answer the questions, how to bring those values and principles to the daily reality and to the activities that we are doing uh, from simple clicking on the Facebook like or dislike, all of our activities are gu guided by certain values. From those rather trivial activities to the more complex activities making policy decisions in the corporate sector, in governments, and in international organizations. Therefore, that ladder visually from the cloud of values and principles to daily reality is one of the major challenges that we are trying to address. In addressing those uh, 
the, this challenge, we are basically discussing the key mechanisms of digital cooperation. In the build-up for the in the preparation for the for the for the report, we identify more than 1,000 mechanisms that currently exist in the field of digital cooperation. Those of you who were familiar with the report for the UNCSTD group uh, at that time, uh, four years ago, we identified 643 mechanisms. Obviously, with the latest developments in the extended, approximately 1,200 mechanisms. Therefore, while we are discussing internet governance, digital governance, digital cooperation, uh, there are many developments. People are addressing issues, solving problems in multi-stakeholder way, bottom-up. Uh, governments are, as you as you know, also addressing various cybersecurity, taxation issues, and things are happening. Therefore, the first point uh, in the panel work uh, was to avoid uh, d duplicating uh, the things that already exist or reinventing the wheel or discovering hot water. You can uh, label it in whatever way you want. Therefore, in that analysis, we also identify gaps uh, that exist in the current mechanisms and uh, led towards a discussion about the possible solution, governance architecture solution that may address these gaps. The underlying message that we have been hearing from the, from the consultation is that there is a need to uh, accelerate digital cooperation and digital governance. It is no-brainer. You have been reading the newspapers, and we know for the call from, the, from the Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook. But those calls and those comments are basically frequent uh, uh, all over the world. They could be real, perceived. There are different motivations, but there is a strong feeling that something has to be done in order to address these gaps. These gaps are in particular related to the, this bringing of the values from the, from the cloud of the values and principles to the reality of uh, digital activities. This is one area. The second one is related to connecting the dots among different digital policy silos or the governance silos that, that exist. And it has been underlying message from the national level to regional and global levels that something has to be done to have at least more awareness what's going on behind the, the, poli how the policy wall, whether it is uh, human rights, uh, security, e-trade, and other issues. Therefore, sort of overcoming, and I think overcoming policy silos, I think that we shouldn't break policy silos. They, they exist, they are quite human and normal, that people gather in the small communities like we are gathering in our IG community. But one has to at least ensure that Discussion in one policy silos is informed by discussion going uh, across across the, across the the, the uh, policy border. Therefore, this is the second area which has been emerging uh, as as an important issue. And the third is the question of some sort of trade-offs. We identified quite a few uh, policy trade-offs uh, where. Uh, Ideally, we can uh, make a win-win solution, policy solution, but in some cases, one needs to make a policy trade-off, whether it is a question of privacy protection in some cases and security. Um, I, I can list at least 10 areas where you, where you uh, have ultimately to come to the point to make informed trade-off. Those are three major challenges and gaps that we have been hearing during the consultation. Now, uh, in discussion at the panel, we came to a few potential models how the, those trade-offs and missing links in digital cooperation could be addressed. And uh, I will describe these three, three models, um, uh, uh, emerging models that are not final, we, the panel is still discussing possibilities, but it would be very useful to hear your views and your reflections around these three models. The first one is Digital Cooperation Initiative, which is based on the idea of network of networks, where people and communities gather in the network, uh, network they address and address specific policy issue, whether it is artificial intelligence, internet of, of things, and issues that they consider important. 
that uh, networks can propose a possible policy or uh, norms that can address specific issue. There is no idea, there is no suggestion that this network should uh, provide any recommendation, but the idea is that they generate those ideas for further consideration by governments, technical community, companies, and international organizations. This network of networks uh, should have some sort of loose coordination point in the peer coordination network. It should have a support function. It should have a capacity building function. The second uh, idea that has been emerging in our consultation is related to uh, potential use uh, and, uh, and uh, or strengthening of Internet Governance Forum by, uh, by uh, building on already achieved level of, uh, of cooperation and successes of Internet Governance Forum, by relying on the various analyses and the studies on the enhancement of the Internet Governance Forum that have been, and I'm conducted over the last few years, and quite a few of you have been involved in these exercises, but adjusting it to the, to the demand of the, of the, of the current, uh, current time when it comes to those requests to have more coordination among different policy spaces, potential uh, discussion on the issue-based discussion on policies, some sort of dynamic coalition on steroids, if you can call it, and having a, some sort of a observatory of health desk there where in particular developing countries can address their, uh, their uh, uh, pressing concerns and issues. The third uh, model in, uh, which, which has been under discussion is the, uh, the uh, digital uh, commons platform. And the idea is to have it more uh, closely linked to the United Nations as a place where the issues of digital commons would be addressed. It is important to keep in mind that all of these three models are uh, still in the, in the formative phase. They are ideas that have been considered. They are not, uh, they are not fixed as a solution that the panel will, uh, will propose. But discussion is, uh, is basically centered around, the, around the, these three type of ideas. The first one, digital cooperation initiative, would be public-private uh, framework established uh, by different stakeholders. The second one would be would build on the Internet Governance Forum as a unique interplay between multilateral and multi-stakeholder space. And third one would be closer a link to the UN, uh, UN Secretariat and the UN, uh, UN uh, system. I guess that I answer all questions. Huh? <laughs> now, let me see what, what are the expressions, you know. This is the more or less the construct of the, the, the architecture of the report. The idea is that we present to UN Secretary General these three options, and then he, based on consultations with different stakeholders, can, uh, can advance one of those uh, options or maybe combine two or all three options further uh, via stakeholders, community, member states, and other, and other actors. One overall impression that uh, we have been receiving from the consultation process is that uh, nobody, at least openly, has been questioning multi-stakeholder approach. There is now, I've been in this field, as you know, for 15, 20 years. There is a clear evolution that uh, multi-stakeholder approach is accepted and appreciated by, by almost all interlocutors with whom we have been discussing digital cooperation. Obviously, it has to coexist and to interplay with the, with the multilateral process that, that currently exists in the various fields in e-commerce discussion, cybersecurity, and, uh, and, other, and other related, related uh, issues. Another dominant uh, feedback, especially from international organization, is that we have faster than we thought and the digitalization of the agenda of traditional policy institutions or tradition, uh, traditional policy issues. Health is becoming increasingly health. There is digitalization on discussion on the, eco, on the commerce, on the humanitarian assistance, and it is, it is happening uh, faster, faster than we, we expected. 
Therefore, this is one of the major trends which I guess IGF and our broader community should be aware of. Digitalization of the WHO agenda, ILO agenda, WTO is, 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 uh, is happening rather fast, and uh, that will be one of the challenges that future cooperation architecture should address. And these challenges will be coming more and more on the agenda of the IGF in whatever form of IGF continue to address them. Well, I promise to be brief. This is always dangerous when you make a claim to be brief. Thank you, Yavan. We do have some, some <clears throat> people in the queue for questions. So, I mean, thank you. I think that was a good intro. Um, could I just ask those folks that aren't speaking to turn the mic off, because it does actually help with the volume? Venny? <laughs> Sorry, it just helps with the volume on the other, on the other mics, and I think remotely as well. Um, so we have Marilyn Cade. Um, Marilyn, and then we have Rola Chabria. They're both participating online. Um, we've had some success actually hearing the audio in the room, but we've also had to resort to reading the transcript there. So let's see what we can do. Can we hear Marilyn? Can I guess Marilyn's question? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we can't hear you, Marilyn. Um, the scribe can obviously hear you, though. Okay. Um, oh, we can read it. Oh. Yeah. Are we going to be able to get the audio in a moment? Just, just one second, Marilyn. We can read for sure, but anybody that wants to watch the stream later on sees five minutes of silence with everybody's head in their computer reading, and that doesn't, that's not particularly good for the ongoing record. Okay, Marilyn, why don't you, you go ahead and we will read from the scribe. Yes, please go ahead. Because I believe that is, in fact, 
one of our biggest challenges that we have yet to really address everything which is stressing the appearance of our risk factors and how to really address. But I do think that at least one of the main companies should undertake to examine how digitization is changing the world. Even in developing countries, where drones may now be delivering agricultural uh, supplies or healthcare information. Um, and I would make one final comment that I, I would ask you to comment on. We always want, as we're talking about ourselves, how have we blended our culture recently to access to the new now that we have with a thought leadership model of strategic thinkers um, as a scientist and others who come in and talk to the lab about the changing world as they see it and the future of how technology affects society. Just to kind of update all of us on what is going on and then we can begin to develop programs at the IPF with a more futuristic approach. Okay, Marilyn, I think we've reached the end of your comments. Um, just want to make sure because the we could hear you and then we couldn't in, in the scribe. Um, thank you very much, Marilyn, and thank you for um, putting forth with the audio visual difficulties as well. Um, uh, Jovan, do you want to respond to anything Marilyn said and then we'll go back to the queue? Jovan? Marilyn, you, you surprised me. I thought that I knew the question which would, I thought would be on the national and regional IGFs, but you, you really surprised me with co different focus. Uh, first, thank you. Thank you for all of your efforts uh, you have been putting in um, various digital spaces. You pointed to two uh, key aspects in, uh, in your, your discussion is first that Digital is basically becoming society. Digital economy is just economy, and we are noticing that. And it is a huge challenge for all of us involved in digital policy space. And you pointed to an extremely important aspect is uh, uh, related to thinking about the future and re deeper reflections in what direction society is moving. We have been hearing a lot of reflections from social scientists, from um, science fiction authors from um, diplomats, technical people, related to the need to step back and to reflect on some core challenges that uh, our society is happening. We are basically preparing some events with science fiction authors uh, who, who may be useful. This is one extreme community in providing some reflections. But it is a clear message which we have been hearing from China to Silicon Valley in Africa. I just came from the Western Balkans uh, and uh, Moscow from the Russian IGF. People are uh, both excited about possibilities but also concerned beyond, beyond just the core technical issues. They want to see what is coming, what are the dilemmas, uh, ethical, societal dilemmas we have to address. And this is some sort of deep uh, reflections of societies worldwide. Therefore, your point is, I think, is extremely important to try to continue with this, this uh, type of reflections. Thank you, Marilyn. Thank you, Jovan. Raul, I should really thank you for Thank you very much. Uh, hi, Jovan. This is uh, Raul Echeverria speaking on behalf of myself. Um, this uh, has been a very, uh, very useful report, uh, Jovan. Um, you mentioned at the, at the beginning that the, the, the first challenge is to, is to draw the, the, the set of uh, values that sh should support the digital cooperation. 
So my first question for you is, uh, to what extent uh, are you taking in consideration the outcomes of uh, Metrobial that uh, work uh, deeply on the, on exactly on the, on the elaboration of a set of principles to support internet governance that could um, be um, used also in a broader um, definition of uh, digital cooperation. Uh, <coughs> the second thing is that um, I think that the, the, this uh, classification you presented very quickly and uh, for the possible um, solutions or way forward, and then I think it's a, it's a good uh, recollection of uh, different uh, options. And one that is, uh, is very um, bottom up um, and managed by the, the own stakeholders, uh, one that is the, the build on the on the existing OCF, including the OCF, and the first one that is more uh, UN based um, multilateral or model. Um, and one thing that uh, I think is, is, is very interesting to, to, to recognize is that the, the inter international organizations, multilateral organizations, are not the same than um, in 2003. Um, Clearly, the, those organizations were not ready to take uh, bigger roles in internet governance 16 years ago. Uh, most of the organizations uh, uh, didn't have all the knowledge and the expertise to deal with the, with the emerging issues related to the internet. Uh, now, I have, I, I'm seeing a great evolution in some of them, not in all of them. But it's clear also that, on the other hand, that is the, is, uh, the multi-stakeholder model is something that came to stay. So it should be a, a, a big step back to to, um, uh, to move um, uh, toward a more um, multi-governmental uh, model. So I think that's a, what is clear for me is that the the, the, the second model is still the option to that, uh, to consider more more deeply and uh, more seriously. The, um, it's a, it's clear that there is a lot of work to do and we have to take very seriously this. Uh, improvement of the IGF and in the context of what you are saying, I think that the discussions around the future of IGF become more and more relevant and should um, find all of us uh, working together in order to, to continue making this IGF uh, an, a relevant uh, tool for the uh, international community to deal with all the, the challenging issues. Thank you very much. Thank you, Raul, for a comprehensive set of comments. Is there anything you want to respond to at this point, Jovan? Raul, now unlike with Marilyn Cade, I, um, I expected comment on Net Mundial, and uh, the answer is yes. We are considering the Net Mundial principles, which are uh, extremely valuable codification of the of the um, values and principles in digital policy field. In addition to UN Charter, in addition UN, uh, UN Declaration on Human Rights and uh, other other documents and the main problem is how to how to converge all of those principles to a manageable number because we started with almost 30 principles we are now getting to uh, with some convergences to 15 to 20 principles and obviously versus principles which were developed during the geneva and the tunis process uh, your point on uh, on the major changes is is extremely valid the, the world is changing um, that's part of dialectics of life, uh, new issues are emerging. Uh, and I, I have to admit that the, some of the constructs that were developed 15 years ago uh, during the versus process are still us and they are sustaining the, the test of time. And I think that all of those who were involved at that time in Tunis, in Geneva and Tunis should be proud of their achievements. And IGF is one of those, uh, those achievements. And uh, yep, uh, thank you. Thank you for your comment on the on the models, and uh, we'll uh, take them into consideration. Have a nice, I guess, morning um, in Uruguay if you are there. Bye. Thank you, Jovan. Uh, next, we have Raquel. Raquel, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Lynn, and thank you very much, Jovan, for uh, coming here and outlining the uh, the recommendations of the high-level panel. Um, as Marilyn or says, it's undeniable, and we're very glad to have you in this 
process. Personally, your book and Diplo Foundation were the start point for me in internet governance. So thank you very much. Um, uh, I guess we submitted the contribution as Internet Society to the to the process. There is no point on going back uh, to to all the concerns. Uh, of course, we we had uh, major concerns with technical community involvement in the in the process of these consultations. But uh, um, after hearing um, a bit on the reasoning and this outline of the recommendations, um, I, I would point to, to two questions. Uh, are we expected uh, to have another round of consultations uh, and react to those, uh, to, the, to, to the outlines or uh, to some sort of draft? And um, if so, how much this would influence it up to the f uh, final pro report? And also, um, I mean, now in the conversations with Raul, Raul is in Uruguay, by the way, and it, since 5 a.m. joining us, so <laughs> lots of coffee. But uh, is there any assessment on the impact uh, precisely on the Tunis agenda commitments? Okay. Um. We are currently at the Helsinki meeting where we outlined the main uh, architecture of the report, uh, we started, uh, we receiving the comments, feedback from the panel members, and we would like to use uh, um, the, this meeting and the all meetings, I think we'll have some meeting with technical community over the next few days, quite a few bilateral me meetings uh, during during the VSIS process to get, to get uh, feedback, to get the ideas uh, around uh, this three type of recommendation and the uh, overall uh, construction of the report. Therefore, it's not it is not too late to provide uh, suggestions. The report will be finalized uh, for the presentation to Secretary General at the end of May. But the good news is that at least based on hints that we are receiving from the, from the overall process is that the report will be the basis for the additional iteration of discussions and consultation. Therefore, the key spirit of the, this process is to have a all uh, relevant inputs uh, heard and consideration and complaints and, uh, and uh, worries, the red line, uh, whatever lines we have these days. Therefore, this is essential that we, we hear the feedback from the communities, in particular te technical community, which, is, which has been extremely important in shaping digital, digital uh, developments. Uh, we are not conducting the official review of Tunis agenda. Obviously, we are considering the versus documents together with SDGs. SDGs are one of the elements where we are trying to frame the overall uh, values and the approach to, to digital policy. But we don't have official review of the Tunis agenda. We are using values and principles and uh, obviously articles like Article 72 and all the relevant articles that could uh, provide input into design of possible models. Thank you, Jovan. Um, very encouraging to actually hear that the signals continue to be that the report itself would actually be the basis of the, the next consultation. I understand that's not a done deal yet, but I'm glad the signals are, are strong. I did not um, mention on a MAG call, of, I don't know, a few weeks ago, that in a meeting with um, the uh, Secretary General's office, that they had expressed significant interest in actually having discussions around the report at the IGF meeting in Berlin. And they were asking us to keep that in mind as we actually work towards the program and make sure that we um, could, um, or were certainly asking if we were amenable to actually um, making time and, and facilitating that. Um, in that meeting, I actually suggested as well that we could consider ways to do some online um, consultations ahead of time, um, which would certainly give a much broader review of the report and since so much of what we all do here and so much of what the UN is concerned about is inclusion and access and getting to those underserved communities or those communities that don't have access, um, I think anything we can do to build those processes on the front end that would do that would, would, would be very important. I also think it's a great opportunity for all those communities that, to help determine what the next round of internet governance structures or mechanisms or processes are. So I think anything we can do really to, to get that out to those other communities is, and there's certainly been an awful lot of advances in tools um, and that sort of thing. And there's also um, a lot of physical movement that can actually facilitate that. 
So I think that's something that um, the MAG and I'm sure many other um, entities will take up as well, but take up specifically with respect to how we can get a really, you know, broad, robust, thoughtful consultation. And it can't just be the usual suspects because I think that'll get us, frankly, the same answers we've been we've been delivering for some time now. So we need to find a way to reach out more more broadly and and more deeply. Thank you, thank you, Lynn, for bringing this point. The overall spirit is that what we are facing these days within, in the panel in your work is basically of the of the relevance beyond the, beyond our traditional core uh, uh, bodies or the uh, forums that uh, that we have been we have been uh, attending, and this is of utmost uh, importance to have as many communities, individuals, uh, countries, uh, stakeholders involved in this discussion. Obviously, there are physical organizational procedural limits, but there is a strong, strong uh, interest and push from the Secretary General himself and the, from the, his team to have that this discussion uh, as inclusive as possible and as relevant for the, for the setting the some sort of building blocks for the future, not only, I would say, digital developments. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Jovan. Next in the queue, we have Danko. Danko, you have the floor. Uh, thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Jovan. And usually I will not have a comment, but like two short questions. I especially like that you presented those three models. And um, regarding the first model, Network of Networks, my question is uh, how you see the relationship of that with the uh, UN? Uh, and is the idea of that model to have some sort of a UN stamp on it? Because I see it, it's mem mentioned the private public par partnership. So how that will function. And the second question is regarding the messages we have from uh, Paris IGF and from President Macron about the need uh, for the evolution of the IGF. Um, I understand that your Jovan role is primarily as a facilitator of the process, so you are presenting those three models as three options. But what is your personal view? Which of those are best uh, is answering this call for the evolution? So thanks. Jovan? Answer the answer to the first question is UN would be one of the one of the partners into these networks. Therefore, let's say if we have the network addressing Internet of Things and the privacy, it will be open for the UN representatives along the lines of the private sector, civil society, technical community. Uh, a second question is uh, related to the, the call by President Macron, um, and I would say. He was very specific by asking, for example, IGF to follow up on the Paris call and uh, suggesting some specific steps for the for the IGF. But in addition to to his uh, his call, uh, that this is underlying message from many many policy policy circles that uh, there is a need to to, to do something. Uh, and uh, I think that um, those calls should be should be addressed, and this is the reason why, among other reasons, why the Secretary General established this this panel in order to to uh, be proactive in addressing the calls for the uh, digital cooperation on the, on the international level. Well, uh, a third point, uh, <laughs> the answer is relatively simple. I'm from the IGF community for for, for, for a long time, and um, emotionally. Uh, this is this is basically my brother family, and uh, you are adopted, all of you, and uh, and that's that's it. But uh, apart from the let's say um, uh, this personal aspect, uh, if I put the expert expert hat, I think the IGF model is probably the most realistic to be further developed for the few reasons. First, there is a mandate, which is extremely important. Second, uh, there is uh, there is a lot of uh, dynamics from the um, procedures to the fascinating work of the secretariat to tacit understandings of the IGF community which is important for any any social 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 uh, social endeavor which is also the risk that we from time to time we tend to uh, to to slide into inwards looking which is very human for any social social dynamics but uh, IGF would be definitely from the Experts, let's say, expert point of view, the the most realistic and uh, the the most appropriate way to address these issues. In particular, IGF has unique 
double legitimacy. It has multilateral legitimacy by being convened by the UN Secretary General, and it has multi-stakeholder legitimacy, <coughs> which is present here in the room. And it's very difficult to find any international structure with this sort of type of double legitimacy. Thank you, Jovan. Hannah, you have the floor. Now, difficult question is coming. <laughs> Thank you, Chair, and thank you, Jovan. It's nice to see you, too. Hannah Hashmi, United Arab Emirates, here as a MAG member. So really, really, I, I do sincerely want to thank you and congratulations on the extensive work done in, in just eight months, which is you know, speed of light by, by UN terms, for sure. Um, <laughs> No, I, I'm serious. <laughs> um, I, I also, uh, you know, I, I think it's worth uh, recalling the conversations we had uh, around, I, I don't even know, uh, over eight months ago now, perhaps this time last year, um, almost, uh, in the lead up to sort of the, the start of the panel and, and, and recall that there was, there was broad support uh, for this panel, particularly by, by small states. Um, and, and the reason for that uh, was, was an interest specifically uh, in, in models of cooperation and ways uh, to engage um, more in, in, in the developing um, world of, of digital cooperation. So I think it, it's, it's really great that this report is coming out, that it is really timely, um, and that it's worth remembering that this, this extended beyond the IGF and that the scope was, was uh, broader than that. And based on that, it's, it's really good to see um, some of the preliminary recommendations, and thank you for sharing them. Um, I do have a, a couple of questions uh, to link the discussion with some of some of the debates we've been having in, in this room. Um, one of them is, is it's, it, thank you for, for identifying the over a thousand mechanisms. I just wanted to check whether there was some consideration of, of how impactful these mechanisms are um, so as to, to lead more towards uh, recommendations. Um, the second question uh, has to do, um, as, as my colleague just uh, uh, suggested, on, on the network of networks uh, model. Um, would there be some elaboration on, on a home for these or how, how that would function, a sort of guide for practitioners? Um, of course, we take note that the report is to the Secretary General to advise the Secretary General, but wonder if the, the broader community could benefit also from these recommendations and perhaps take some of them on um, regardless of, of the decision of the Secretary General. Uh, the IGF itself for example, is that a space that could host some networks of networks? Would, could some of the, the existing um, groups within the IGF work on them? And a third and related question um, is, what kind of IGF session might help in considering the actual report? So if I understand correctly, the panel itself would cease to exist in June. Um, and so if we want to plan something in November, uh, it would kind of be up to us to think about the kind of format that would be helpful um, to either uh, create space for a consideration of the report, and, and, and I thank the chair also for considering this as a, a longer term thing, uh, or to create space for, you know, a, for more ownership and initiative on, on acting on perhaps some of the, the recommendations. So I'll stop there with a sincere thanks. I hope it wasn't too hard. I'm sure you're up to it. Thanks. <laughs> Jovan, did you want to thank comment? You. Thank you, Hannah, especially for your efforts in early days of the panel. Um, um, Hannah is um, very, very modest, but she put a lot of energy, creative ideas in, uh, in this lifting of, of the panel from the ground. And I would like to thank you publicly for your efforts in, uh, uh, in, uh, in Ju June, July last year. Uh, now, how Im impactful are those mechanisms? Uh, obviously, we, we didn't have a time to analyze all of them, but I would say um, um, internet is functioning. Uh, we can send email, uh, we can, um, well, I hope you're not uh, you're listening to me not browsing the websites worldwide, but even from this room we use Wi-Fi, and I always say that the less visible those mechanisms are, and the, the more we take them for granted, uh, the more successful they are. And I think that is sometimes underestimated what is done by the technical community, by uh, by ICANN and other actors to make it functional, and that's that's a great success. Uh, obviously, the issues are posing new challenges. Some challenges related to cybersecurity, to e-commerce, uh, need the use of existing institutions, first of all, but also need some sort of a 
upgraded mechanisms to address specificities of the Internet, especially amplifying effect of the Internet communication. We know the principle is existing law applies offline, applies online, and this is accepted principle. But the question is how it applies. And this is probably the major challenge for to our stress test that we will be facing in the years, uh, in, the, in the coming years, how to, what would be stress test reaction of the WHO mechanisms, ILO, WTO, and other mechanisms that regulate traditional public policy issues. But so far to touch the wood, I think internet is doing quite well and uh, there is a positive impact. Network of networks, the idea is that they are hosted in different institutions. Uh, there is a need to discuss details and as always, you know, the, the well, devil is in details uh, and the devil is in detail and we will be will be basically addressing this issue, what type of institutions can host uh, different networks. But the idea is to have, to have it relatively open to, uh, well, definitely uh, frameworks like IGF, but also non-state actors, technical communities, universities, think tanks, and people who, who can facilitate substantively discussions on the policy issues. <laughs> Thank you, Jovan. Um, next in the queue, we have Paul Blaker from the UK government, and then we'll go to Vincenzo from e-government in DESA. So, Paul, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Lynn, and, and thank you very much for the presentation and, and for coming and sharing these ideas with us and giving us all an opportunity to comment. I think that's really uh, valuable, and, and we're grateful uh, to you for that opportunity. It struck me while I was listening um, just how much of what you talked about repeated many of the themes and the ideas from the CSTD working group on enhanced cooperation. And I wonder whether the panel took that work into account in its deliberations. Um, uh, the working group uh, was a broadly representative group, I think, of all stakeholders uh, and from all global regions. Uh, we didn't have any celebrities, unfortunately, we didn't have that advantage. <laughs> uh, but I think that working group did a really thorough job and spent many, many hours grappling with these issues, and, and it's worth looking at their work. Um, CSTD um, looked at some of these ideas, uh, wanted to pursue some, but also found uh, others were at risk of duplication, and that's something that you mentioned, uh, and, and that there is already a proliferation of different initiatives, and, and do we really need more? And I got a sense in some of the ideas that you were presenting uh, that there were two particular ideas which seem to me now to be quite old-fashioned. Uh, and, and one is this idea that digital policy is somehow separate to other kinds of policy. And I think Marilyn kind of referred to that, that digital policy is separate to economic policy, it's separate to social policy, and, and therefore it should be managed separately. I think we all know that's not true anymore. Um, uh, and having a separate process or whatever it is simply for digital isn't enough. Uh, and the second idea is that somehow digital policy issues, well, they all have digital in common, therefore they should all be treated the same, or there is one solution that's going to, to, to address them all. Uh, and also, we know that's not true. Uh, digital policy issues are very, very different and very varied and require different kinds of responses in order to address them effectively. So these ideas that digital policy is separate or, or there is one solution uh, may have been current at the time of the WISIS, maybe in 2005, but in tw 2019, they do seem very old fashioned. We know digital is mainstreamed. It runs through all policy areas. And so one question is whether the panel made an assessment of how existing organizations are addressing these issues and how effective existing organizations are. We know many UN organizations, for example, are doing work on digital, UNESCO, ITU, ILO, UNODC, etc., etc. Did the panel make 
I mean, you, you counted initiatives, but did they make a, a qualitative assessment of how effective those, those organisations are and whether there are things that could be done to improve them? So I think that given that digital is mainstream now, um, not paying attention to the existing architecture would be a real missed opportunity. Um, and then finally, um, I really welcome and agree with the things that you said about the IGF and the legitimacy of the IGF. Uh, and we were talking uh, this morning a little bit about um, how the I there are opportunities for the IGF coming out of the Secretary General's tech strategy in terms of uh, finding legitimate platforms for multi-stakeholder engagement and, and, and demonstrating and taking those ideas forward. Uh, and I, I hope that the digital uh, panel, digital cooperation panel will um, strengthen the efforts that Maggie is already undertaking uh, to strengthen the IGF and will provide more fuel, if you like, to, to that effort uh, to strengthen the IGF and make sure that the IGF is uh, fulfilling its mandates as, as effectively as it could. But um, there are just some, some brief reflections. I'm, I'm particularly interested in the extent to which the panel has made any assessment or will make any recommendations about the work that the existing architecture is doing. Thank you. Thank you, Paul. I wish I had a joke so I could give you a bit more time to, <laughs> to reflect here, Jovan, but uh, over to you. Great. Uh, Paul, uh, th thank you for, uh, for um, all these reflections. F f first of all, um, work on the, on the, in the panel, um, for me personally, and ultimately, everything starts from the from the personal experience. We then extend it to in the to in the institutional or group. Is is mix of a, of a bit of deja vu, and you mentioned the UNCSTD, but always like in a fashion, you know, when the old fashion is returning. And my wife always complains that she cannot use the old uh, old clothes because there is always some sort of small change which uh, makes you forces you to buy the new clothes or whatever new 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 things. And I think that would be the answer. Uh, those issues have been discussed for a long time, in, the, in particular in the working group on the um, um, CST working group, but also in other IGF, IGF uh, uh, bodies. But the new element which is, which is emerging is basically especially digitalization of the traditional policy issues that you mentioned. Movement from the recognition that existing rules that apply online to the asking how they can be uh, how they can be applied that's that's a re real 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 challenge though this is the new element in in overall discussion yes we cannot have one uh, solution for such a diverse policy issues and uh, i think that that option has not been entertained in the panel's discussion there is clear understanding of the huge diversity and need to have diverse digital policy policy approach uh, your point, yes, the, I mean, this is mainstreaming of the digital into existing organizations. But there is one interesting development in discussion that we have with international organizations. They're also trying to revisit some of their challenges that they existed in traditional, in traditional coverage of, let's say, health and other issues via digital. And one of the challenges is overcoming policy silos. Therefore, there is in a way paradoxical aspect that when it's, it is mainstreamed, where digital is mainstreamed, it is also used as a, as a tool to modernize approach in traditional policy processes. And that's, that's an interesting interplay. One approach that was discussed, and I, it will be part of the report, is a sandbox approach, uh, sandbox approach where we don't, when we don't know the answer to the question we approach them with the utmost modesty, experiment, following the feedback, and trying to adjust the rules. And I think that could be one of, one of the ideas that IGF could also consider as a, some sort of a modernization aspect. Yeah, th that would be great if we can, if, we, if the, this overall process, whatever the, the Secretary General decides, but if the overall process can help uh, strengthening the IGF mandate and the preparing the IGF for the, well, the new quite fast changing phase in the, in the global digital developments. 
that would be, I would say, win-win solution for, uh, for all who are involved and concerned with digital developments. Thank you, Jovan. Vincenzo, you have the floor. Vincenzo, uh, you want to introduce yourself? Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, my question is uh, about the relationship between uh, the uh, Secretary General strategy on new technology and uh, the, the, the work that you have been doing on the report. Because as a uh, uh, UN perspective, I am the Chief of Digital Government, and we are realigning our yeah. priority, our strategies, and our activities based on that document. From the other hand, that document also has one of the outcomes, that is your report, but also is giving some clear guidelines in terms of cooperation for different agencies. And also, I, and this, you know, it's easy for us to work more closely with the other organization we are already doing inside the UN family, it becomes more complicated when we talk about PPP or when we talk about multi-stakeholder. So I would like to understand more if in the report there is also something that can also facilitate our day-by-day -day working at UN in, in this field. Thank you, Vincenzo. That's a very interesting, interesting question. Thank, Jovan? thank you, Vincenzo. One of the chapters of the report will deal with the, the role of the UN in the fast-changing uh, changing world. You already mentioned SDGs and tech, uh, tech strategies, uh, two documents that are two policy processes which are influencing the, the, these developments. Uh, I have to admit that, and um, that sort of a confession, I was a bit, when I started this process, I was a bit ignorant about SDG, potentials of the SDGs. And one of the lessons that I learned during the, the, the panel process is the uh, potential power of SDGs to especially con to connect the different, different dots, uh, policy issues. You're much more familiar working in UNDESA about this, but I would like to invite all of you to, to revisit, at least this is what I did uh, after diagonal reading of SDGs. I spent quite a bit of time, and SDGs have a lot of potentials. They have also enormous potential, and we'll discuss it next week in Silicon Valley, to be some sort of anchor for AI developments. You know, the key issue in, in AI discussion is ethics and how AI can serve core values of humanity. In the base, basis of conceptual basis of the uh, SDGs are the core human, uh, human values, from a question of uh, poverty reduction, inequalities, inclusion. And one of the ideas, for the next week discussion is to see how SDGs could be operational in guiding the AI developments. Therefore, there will be quite a few, few uh, proposals coming, uh, um, um, coming from, the, from the report in relation to the UN. Thank you. Thank you for your question. Thank you. And that last speaker was Vincenzo Aquaro from DESA e-government, I think, or is it government? Digital. Di I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I conflated the E and the digital from digital um, government. There was a request in the chat room for speakers to identify themselves if we're not using the queue. Um, Raul, Echebria, Raul, you have the floor. Yes, uh, thank you very much. Um, uh, I found very interesting the comments from Paul from UK government. Uh, I think that the, in fact it helped us very much to organize my uh, uh, ideas. Uh, um, I, I think that this is exactly what uh, I was trying to say when saying that uh, this is, if we consider that the, all the existing organizations have been evolving in order to adapt themselves uh, to the um, new, uh, new world, um, so it's, it's not. It, the discussion is not just about creating something or, or to, to deal with all the digital policy. Is so I I feel that the, probably the model one and two are not necessarily mutually um, exclusive because it is uh, about having a place like IGF an improved IGF to um, to be the the the, the entry <laughs> point uh, to some of the discussions and the the way to convene all the, the multi-stakeholder global community and, and to catalyze the, the, the many of those discussions in a multi-stakeholder fashion, but at the same time to connect with other networks that are the existing networks in a, 
intergovernmental, but also non-governmental networks that uh, are dealing with many other issues already. So I don't know if, uh, um, if um, I think that probably this is uh, uh, something else to, to explore. Of course, it demands uh, the, the need to uh, improvement also in, the, in, in, in those uh, existing organizations and not only in the, in the ICF uh, side. Um, it's a, <laughs> it's a, it's a, Jovan, you spoke about deja vu. I think my deja vu is that, is that it, it, this is not very different of uh, what uh, we were doing in 2004 and 2005 in the working group on internet governance, trying to propose uh, options, alternatives uh, for, uh, for mechanisms to deal with uh, governance issues. Uh, of course, this is a different uh, context, different time. Uh, the mission is still uh, something uh, similar. But the, the point is that if at that time, the, the, the arrangements that were adopted and the creation of IGF was the result of, the, of two um, world summits and the work of the, of the working group on internet governance. So it was very, we had a um, very good mechanism to, to, des to define the level of support that those ideas uh, had. So I don't know how so you think, I, I know that it will depend on the, uh, on the Secretary General at the end of the day, but, uh, but uh, how do you envisage that, that uh, the, the level of support to the new ideas could, um, uh, could be measured? Because creating new institutions is, uh, is quite easy. What is a very difficult labor is to shut down the, the, the new mechanisms if, if they are not the appropriate ones. So this, uh, we have to be very careful in the sense that that uh, really the, the things that we do are things that have broad support in the, in the, in the global um, community that is not longer just a multilateral um, it's a community. It's, a, it's this uh, big, uh, broad, uh, multi-stakeholder community that we have created. Thank you, Raul. Jovan, is there anything you want to reflect on or reflect back? Well, as, as, as always, I, I, I agree with the rule. I think that there is, uh, one has to be very, very careful of when, uh, when, when there is a discussion about a new, a new mechanism. Sometimes solutions could uh, look on the first glance simply easy, but as we know, the the life, special life of a new institution is often very complex. And this is one of the reasons why, for example, the idea to strengthen the IGF is strongly entertained in the, in the various, various uh, discussions. Uh, we will, uh, within the context and the current circumstances, which are different from the Vergig and versus process, we have been trying to involve as many uh, communities as, uh, as it, it has been uh, possible. And I know that Secretary General and the UN will also like to continue with the consultations. Uh, and uh, that's the, given the circumstances which are different from the versus process, we are trying to make as very broad ownership uh, of the possible solution that will be proposed and uh, possibly implement in the forthcoming period. Thank you, Jovan. I actually have a, a comment or a question. Um, I, too, have been involved in this area for a very, very long time. In fact, when I was the president and CEO of the Internet Society, participated in a meeting just down the road um, here in Cope, at the Chateau de Cope, which was imagining what a WISIS, World Summit on the Information Society, might be. So it was pre-WISIS 1, pre-prep sessions for WISIS 1, and, and participated deeply in all the prep sessions, WISIS 1, 2, et cetera. Um, when we got to WISIS 2 in Tunis, there were two... Um, possibilities that were mooted. Um, quite a number of member states supported putting um, a, an internet governance forum or activity within the ITU. Quite a number of others um, specifically um, supported putting it in the Internet Society. So two very different organizations, clearly. I mean, civil society technical, um, UN governmental, with very different procedures. Particularly at that time, the procedures were very different between the, the two um, entities. As, Many of you that were there remember. So, I mean, the United Nations took quite a bold, you know, stroke at that time, I think, to establish the IGF. As you say, multi-stakeholder with a lot of its principles, let the community decide its operating practices, 
um, its frequency of meetings and virtually all the other um, parts that have come through the IGF ecosystem actually came from the community, whether it was the National Regional Youth IGF initiatives, the Dynamic Coalitions, the Best Practice Forums, the format of the meetings, the MAG even, in fact, um, was a construct that grew, grew organically. So having said all that, I think many in the community would say we haven't always sort of felt the support from the United Nations system fully as we would have expected given that. It would be really interesting to know whether or not the panel actually spent any time understanding what, what might have been done differently, what we could do to build that support up. Because whether you start up and an, an strengthened IGF or a network of networks or if we're not actually bringing the governments and the UN system into this discussion, we'll find ourselves in the same things. We are so poorly funded here. We have an operating budget expectation of $2.8 million a year. This year we're on a running rate of about 1.4, and our current contribution expected level at this point in time is less than $800,000. Last year we ate into the reserves by $200,000, $300,000. Operating budget of just over a million dollars, and I think we brought in just under 800 again. We find great difficulty finding funds. We have said for years that we don't get appropriate uh, level of um, senior policy uh, maker participation. There are some notable exceptions, and we're not getting um, senior or appropriate level of support from the private sector. So, I mean, I think it would be really interesting in that report if there was any work done that would actually look at what are some of the maybe systemic causes for that. I mean, I, I've actually been in New York and I've said, I have to say, I don't think the IGF has always felt the love from the broader UN system. Um, obviously not from DESA and the departments we work very closely with, but just broadly and generally. Um, so I think it would be really helpful if, um, if it hasn't been done to date, that somehow there's an allowance made in the report that really looks at, you know, given we were, we think, a very innovative form, you said multilateral, multi-stakeholder, um, part of a four or five year two part United Nations World Summit on the Information Society and we are starved for resources and participation. So I don't know what will make any new model or any new structure more effective if we don't understand, um, you know, s systemically is it, some people have said, is it, you know, discomfort with a multi-stakeholder model so people stay away? Um, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot the IGF can own, absolutely, with respect to what we've done um, to, you know, increase our own participation and outreach. But I also think at the same time we have done a tremendous, tremendous amount of work with the resources and the support we've had. And that's thanks to individuals, it's thanks to communities, it's thanks to probably about 20 governments and private sector companies and technical organizations. You can go look at the funding. It's up on the website since, since day one. So if you think about what we've actually accomplished with that little support, if we could actually get behind this, properly get behind this, political will, political resource, financial support, I think we could accomplish a lot more a lot faster. And I think we're all aligned in the fact that the world actually needs that and is looking for it. But I, I do hope that's addressed in the, in the report somehow. And if not, maybe we can find a way to structure some work that really makes that, that clear. Sorry I mean, if I get a little... Great, great, great summary. And uh, I think from time to time we have to step back and congratulate ourselves. And we, uh, being involved in day-to-day -day dynamics, uh, we, we sometimes forget what has been achieved. And your summary is excellent. IGF is one of the rare forums, uh, digital policy forums, with equal, uh, uh, with the gender, proper gender equality. Somebody's calling? No. Good. With the gender equality, uh, uh, relative parity when it comes to the participants and speakers, we analyzed uh, three last IGFs, and uh, this is a remarkable achievement. We have now versus forum, uh, the ITU, which has a multi-stakeholder participation, and a very nice interplay between versus forum and IGF. Well, it, as you know, it wasn't necessarily always that way in 2003 and 2005. IGF pushed the frontier when it comes to online participation. Many international organizations learn from the IGF and the ITU and ICANN and, uh, and the, these actors. Therefore, I think the IGF and the IG community contributed a lot to the, let's say, global public good on inclusive uh, policy making. 
having said that, uh, uh, we have to adjust to the time and changes. And you outlined in your comments what is happening around us. And I think this is one of those decisive moments where IGF has to step into the, into the sort of next phase. The question of leadership uh, is important. Uh, now we are really fortunate that Secretary General is strongly behind the IGF. He delivered a, a very important speech in Paris. Uh, we had, uh, during the last two IGFs, two presidents uh, addressing, the President of Switzerland and President Macron. Therefore, there is a clear signal that, uh, that leadership uh, and political buy-in is increasing uh, worldwide. But the ultimate question is, if the IGF is going to be relevant and attractive for different stakeholders. We cannot say, okay, we are the institution and you should come to the IGF. It won't work. People gather in the web summit, thousands of the IT specialists, and they discuss digital policy issues. And you have so many meetings worldwide. Therefore, we have to make sure that we remain attractive and, uh, and relevant and useful for wider communities. I think this is the only way how I would say we can also ensure the financial support and the growing relevance of the IGF. And thank you for the great summary and for your efforts during the ISOC time and now at the IGF. No, no, thank, thank, thank you, Jovan. Um, I just have one um, additional um, comment I'd like to make in the room, and it's because it was a comment that was in the chat room here, because today is the open consultation day for the community. Um, and there was a suggestion that was made that as we might consider what we might do with the report um, at the IGF Berlin to um, just consider what was done at um, one of the IGFs for 2015, obviously, in the WISIS plus 10 um, document. And in, in fact, there was a main session. Um, it was very much imagined and energized and organized by Marilyn Cade. Um, it was actually co-chaired by the ambassadors of the UAE and Latvia. Um, and it was moderated by myself and um, Ambassador Fonseca. And what we did was, and of course we had a document, not unlike what we'll have this time, a document which was the, um, I guess the penultimate report on the WISIS plus 10. So we um, ensured that everybody had the document. Um, we made it clear in the agenda we were going to cover specific parts of the document, which were those which were, um, you know, the subject of a matter of a significant amount of discussion. And we actually divided the room um, physically into four with four mics so that we had uh, the stakeholder um, community. Um, and that was partly to show who was in the room and the impact of multi-stakeholder when you can see people spread about the room. Um, it actually gave us a sense of who was coming to the mic and how many people were taking the mic from each one of the stakeholders and whether or not there was kind of a consistent view within a stakeholder group or across a stakeholder group. So with just a different room set up, there was an awful lot of information that was actually transmitted at the time. And in fact, the report that was put out um, literally said um, things such as, you know, on this particular clause or sentence or idea, there was significant agreement from those people that were in the room. We weren't trying to represent anything that was, wasn't in front of us, but of those people in the room, there was sort of significant agreement on X. Um, or a diversity of opinions or, um, and I think that's just um, a, a good model um, for us to think about. I'm sure it can be proved, improved four or five years later. Um, but at the same time, I really want to think about what we can all do online ahead of time in our own communities, because otherwise I think we're going to have the same arguments and the same answers again if it's the same people in a different format for those that also sat through working group on enhanced cooperation um, set of discussions the last, the last few years. But again, the, the request was that that actually be um, commented on in the open consultation so that people had that for context as we go away and think about the, um, the main sessions. Um, there's obviously a lot more we can talk about here. I think the presentation was very, very helpful, Jovan. Um, and I, you know, I personally hope it helps crystallize kind of the opportunities that are in front of us as the IGF, not just for this IGF in Berlin, um, but really for all the other things we've been trying to do and the improvements we've been trying to work on ourselves for, for, um, for some years. I will um, come in a moment and see if there's any comments from Daniela. We do still have one outstanding request, and that was that um, a comment from ICANN, who wasn't able to give us a comment in the um, earlier session, and I really would like to fit that in. If the scribes are okay staying on a bit longer, 
it shouldn't be very long, um, and we're sort of one minute short yet, so it's probably an extra five, maximum ten minutes, I should, should think. So, Daniela, did you want to comment now specifically on this, or at the end, it's entirely up to you? Thank you, Lynn. Um, this is just very briefly to uh, say thank you. Thank you to Jovan for sharing the information with us. Uh, thank you to all of you here inside the room and also uh, where else in the world uh, coming in, even though this was sometimes difficult today. Um, I have got a lot of input um, today. I've gotten a lot of input and um, we will take this with us maybe overnight, think about it, and then tomorrow there will be interesting discussions also on the question how to deal then with the report in Berlin. Thank you. Thank you, Daniela. <coughs> thank you, everybody, again, and, and a particularly big thank you to Jovan. And Jovan, Nigel's comments are always entertaining, so if you want to stay for that, you're very, very welcome to stay here, and that will be the last um, item of the day. So Nigel Hickson from ICANN, you have the floor. Oops, sorry. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, Madam, can you hear me? Yeah. Is it well? Oh, you can. Oh, well, that's a shame. Uh, yeah, so, <laughs> so uh, N N Nigel Hicks and I can, and uh, I'll be very brief because I, I think you should have probably finished or, 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 or something. So, uh, and apologies, I couldn't be here earlier. So, uh, all I really wanted to do was just to update you on a, a couple of the developments taking place at, uh, at ICANN meetings. But before I do so, and as Jovan is, is just about to leave the room, uh, uh, no, you, you don't have to listen to me at all. But all I wanted to say was what I, I thought what Lynn said earlier, and I'm speaking in a personal capacity, having lived through some of the mechanisms and some of the machinations that uh, Lynn has taken part in, not all of them, and not as now, not uh, as many. But but I think the you know the fundamental uh, 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 the fundamental belief that we all have. In, in, in coming together and uh, and providing something uh, or, or benefit for the wider community is is so essential and the the opportunity that uh, the uh, UN Secretary General has in endorsing uh, this 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 unique approach uh, is, is, is 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 truly is truly valuable. On to uh, on on to ICANN uh, initiatives. Uh, we had a meeting in uh, in, in Kobe uh, back in uh, uh, back in March. Uh, as you know, ICANN has uh, three community meetings uh, a, a year, uh, which attract usually around 2,000 people. The one in uh, uh, Kobe was uh, attracted, I think, just under uh, 2,000. Uh, it's an opportunity for the community to come together and pursue policy uh, policy objectives of, of various nature. In in Kobe, in in, in particular, there was a vigorous discussion on what we call a subsequent process for generic top-level domains. I mean, this sounds very boring. Uh, all it means is that, as some of you know, the, the, the GTLD space, generic top-level domains, .com, .orgs, was expanded in 2012 from 22 to now 1,200 and something. Uh, I won't name them all because I can't. Uh, but, and, and now there is, uh, there's going to be, or there's the pr almost certainly there will be another uh, process, perhaps in 20. 21 perhaps or around that time where uh, people will have the opportunity to apply for new generic top level domains whether they're community names whether they're uh, whether there are open names whether they're uh, uh, company names etc regional names or whatever and the ICANN community is is through a policy development process is contributing to the rules and the regulations and the and the guidelines for this process and and that that if you like that, that process is very important because it's important. It's important to everyone that uh, uh, the number of uh, top-level domains uh, reflects the diversity of the internet. It reflects the different culture, the languages, and the geographical bounds of the internet. So, that's something that is is, is being discussed. In addition to that, the Kobe meeting uh, uh, discussed the, the issue of GDPR and who is, and we, no doubt many of you are involved in, in, in data protection issues and you're aware that the General Data Protection Regulation, which came in in, 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 in May last year, the European Union uh, GDPR, has affected the way that registries and registrars, those that sell domain names, those that register domain names, it's affected the information that they can publish and collect in terms of registrant names and addresses. This is not unique. 
I mean, lots of companies have been affected by the GDPR. ICANN, you know, doesn't have a unique status here. But it does mean that this information that went in a database called the WHOIS database has been, has been constrained. And, and this information is used by law enforcement, uh, etc., and, uh, and for other purposes. So there's been a, a policy development process to try and reflect the, the new environment we live in. Registries and registrars now have to operate under a different environment to be compliant with the General Data Protection Regulation. And a policy development process has just uh, concluded uh, to endorse a, a, a specification, or they will be endorsing a specification in, in due course to ensure that registries and registrars are compliant. The next stuff of the next step of this process, which is probably more important in, in, in some ways, is to develop an access regime so that those with the legitimate interest to understand who is the owner of a, of a domain name can access that information in some sort of, uh, in, in, under some sort of legitimate process. And that work which the community is leading is, is ongoing and will be a, a, a significant feature of the next ICANN meeting which is taking place in uh, Marrakesh in uh, in, in June, in June. Sorry, in uh, late, late, later in June. So those are those are some of the uh, issues. Two two things I, I I just wanted to mention as 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 well because I think they're relevant in terms of the thinking that this uh, wonderful mag has given to the themes uh, for the next IGF. And I I, I just so excited by the themes, Daniela, that you you know you you the mag are taking forward for Berlin. I mean I think it's 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 just going to be so uh, it's going to be exciting exciting in this context and the governance and security stability. Security stability is, is, is all important for ICANN. Obviously our mission is, is for the security and stability of the domain name system. And what we've seen in, in recent months is attacks on the domain name system. We're hoping to reflect on some of that during the Berlin, uh, during the Berlin workshop. Uh, I mean there are always attacks on lots of sites as you know and you, you're all more qualified than I am to talk about this but we have seen targeted attacks on the domain name system in, in, in recent months on, on, on certain types of domains and that and this this is really worrying because this is the you know this is the guts of the of the internet I'm not saying it's any more important than a website selling shoes but well you know but but it, 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 it is an attack on the on the on the on the infrastructure of the internet so that that's one thing I wanted to mention that will be discussed in um, uh, Marrakesh again. The second is, 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 is a new emphasis that the uh, uh, CEO and President uh, Yoram Marbi, and he talked about this yesterday here at uh, here in, in Geneva, his, 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 his initiative, if you like, to work much more closely with governments, with regional bodies, with IGOs, to try and understand ahead of time where their legislation and policies could affect the running of the uh, the running of the internet, and this this is something which I think is is increasingly important that 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 we don't do things, if you like, to break the internet unintentionally. So hopefully we don't do things to break it intentionally, but we certainly you know wouldn't do things to break it uh, unintentionally. That's all I wanted to say. Sorry, and uh, yes, thanks. Thank you, Nigel, and thank you for your flexibility with the time as well, because we did move the um, the agenda item around. Um, before I do the thanks, I just want to make sure that neither Dennis nor Daniela um, had any final. Um, so I want to thank the Secretariat for all of their work, and I also want to really thank Lewis and um, the uh, ITU um, support as well. And I'm very, very sorry because I'm forgetting your name at the moment. Um, because I know, you know as frustrating as it is for us trying to make the AV work, it's much more stressful um, for them. So appreciate everything everything you tried to do um, over the course of the today. And in the end, we actually were able to um, hear them online. So, so thank you. So I say thank you. Um, and thank you to the scribes who, um, you know, just add so much value to these meetings and appreciate um, their staying a few minutes over time as well. What we'll do, we had a pretty open agenda tomorrow because we weren't certain how much we'd hear from the strategic discussions of the MAG yesterday and from the open consultation here. Um, and, but it was all about advancing the IGF 2019 um, program. We had some specific call-outs for discussion on um, any of the sessions, the next step in planning, overall meeting title and theme, et cetera. Um, we will do a quick huddle here after maybe a 30-second pause, 
and um, work on another agenda. I think there's some clear topics we should come to and and really try and kind of structure a discussion on whether it's the main sessions or how we want to approach uh, you know, a really thematic narrative as we do our workshop reviews and outputs, a few other things that have come up over the course of the days. So we'll get a new agenda um, posted, which we will then look at first thing tomorrow when we all come back together and we can do a quick agenda bash and make sure it meets everybody's everybody's needs rather than trying to do that um, late tonight. But so stay tuned. We'll just try and put a little bit of structure. Still working to absolutely the same, the same expected um, outputs, but I think we've got a little bit more definition now. Thank you very much. Thank you to everybody who contributed. Um, and Caboose, thank you again for, for coming in. I think it was very helpful. Thank you. Have a good evening.